Uh, do I don't see anything else here. Um, I can switch over. Hey, one sec. I will switch over so that you guys are hearing me straight from the microphone. See if that helps any. Is that any better? Yeah, it's been steady for, for a minute or so now. Okay. Well, we'll see. Cool. So let us start playing some Fiasco. Uh, all right. So we've got our eight white dice and eight black dice. And so now it's a matter of developing our relationships and details. Um, Trezzy, you're top, so why don't you go first? Okay, well, first we need to sort of arrange an order, like in the Google Doc. Well, normally we'd be sitting at a table. Right. So we'd know who's to the left and who's to the right. Oh, that's a good point. <laughs> yeah, I went ahead and just added my name to the list. Okay, yeah, yeah I'm so thinking we'll, we'll, just, we'll go down. Um, Brian, do you want to be C? I'll be B? Sure. Okay. So, Trezzy, Bob, Brian, Brent. And it's uh, Tracy. Tracy, by the way. All right. <laughs> yeah, Brian knows what that's like. Uh, let's see. All right, so relationships. Um, so, yeah, uh, in the Google Doc, we're labeled A, B, C, and D, just so that there's like an A, B relationship and like a C, D relationship, just so cool. we know. Mm -hmm. All right, so I get to pick a category for any of the relationships. Between anyone, I'm going to make. Let's see. Uh, we have a bunch of fives, so I'm going to delete a five and make uh, Brent and Brian have a romance relationship. Okay. Because <laughs> that's always fun. It works for me. And so I fill that in on the Google Doc. You'll see a five romance um, mm -hmm. on the CD relationship, which is. Brian right, if you five romance, gotcha, and the five's gone. Makes sense. Yep. Okay. So Bob's next. All right. So I'm going to. Oops. Oh, there's all the dice. Okay. So we have everything showing so far. Yep. All right. So in that case. I am going to. I mean, you, you can't have a fiasco without some kind of crime relationship. So, <laughs> I am going to say that there is a crime relationship between uh, myself and Tracy, just because I think he's got a sick and twisted sensibility to him. So, okay. the A B relationship is crime, and I'll go ahead and delete a three. Cool. All right. See here. All right, so yeah, we still have all the numbers. Only one four left. We got a lot right. of ones. I am going to steal uh, family, and I'm going to say that the relationship between A and D is a family relationship. So I'm going to take okay. away a two. So it's uh, Tracy and Brent. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hmm. In that case, <coughs> uh, one more relationship. So you can, you can specify a category or pick any of the elements that have been defined so far. Um, you know, I'd like to define our family relationship. Um, and we've got plenty of, of things. So we could do... Hmm, um, Cousins is pretty generic, not too exciting there. Well, you know, I was just thinking cousins. One thing that you could use to spice it up a little bit is that not only you're cousins with each other, but you're also like, you know, eighth removed cousins from the Saudi prince. Ah, nice. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, the Saudi prince's Perfect. role with a family entourage. Totally. Okay, so yes. Family. One cousins. Cool. Oh, it's my turn again, isn't it? Mm -hmm. so, let's see. The unknown relationship with... Uh, let's see. 
Paul and Brian don't have relationships. Yeah, that crime relationship is interesting. I think I think Bob and Brian need a money relationship. There we go. That goes okay. very well with uh, the opposite side of a crime. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Done. All right. Well, I am going to further seed this uh, this family relationship. I'm going to snag a one, and I'm going to attach a need to get even. Ooh. To Brent and Brian. Getting even with each other it's, or somebody else, do you think? Well, with, I, I'm wondering if they both need to get even with the prince. Well, it's actually okay. Brent and me. Oh, Brent and... Brent. Uh, Tracy. Oh, yeah. DA, you're right, yeah. <laughs> Eight, one, two, I like yeah. that. Even. Okay. Okay. Uh, I would like to establish this crime relationship, uh, which we have between A and B, Tracy and Bob, and I think that if, if it was going to be anything, it's probably going to be serial killer and admirer. <laughs> so we're, I'm going to take one of those threes. And, and put that right in there. Yes. All right. In that case, I need to find <laughs> our romance, I think. About time for that. Um, <laughs> we've still got everything remaining. Um, just looking at the options, uh, I like the idea of first date, because this is a <laughs> wild place to go on a first date. It's true. Um, That's a true thing. Let's go with that, then. Uh, so that is... A two, so that wipes out the last two. Uh, let's see here. First date. Now, are you thinking this is a, a hetero or a same-sex relationship? I do not know yet. Yep, we don't know yet. Okay, because <laughs> this, this could be fairly interesting with one of you being cousins of the prince. Exactly, yes. <laughs> We'll see just All how right. tolerant they are. All right, so is it my turn? Mm hmm Is it my turn? To yes, yes. All right. Uh, let's see. It's a muddy relationship. Yeah. Sounds interesting. So anything but a two. Muddy. I think I'll have to go with Deader and Repo Man. Mm-hmm. Repo oh, man. really? Repo man slash serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. Okay. Oh, my. Hmm. All so right. all, the, all the relationships are done at this point. Okay. So mm -hmm. we have one need being worked on, and we need one additional need, one yeah. location, and one object. Yeah, we got six, five, three, and one left. So, let's, let's get an, some kind of object going on here. Well, the object could be what we're trying to repossess. Or kill. <laughs> That's true. Because <laughs> the one six here is Donald Trump naked and unconscious. <laughs> 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 All right, let's go with... Mm. I gotta go with untoward, so I'm gonna snag a one. And let's see, who is that going to be? Let's see. An untoward object. Oh, you know, you gotta tie that to the money. So I'm gonna say uh, an object. Yeah, untoward, and that's going to be between myself and Brian. Mm. Okay. I am going to snag one of the ones as well. 
and add a location because I think that this would just be such a wasted setting if somebody at one point didn't have a scene above. So I'm going to give that to A, B, location oh, above. <laughs> There's some nice. great ones in there. Okay. Um... Hmm. So, anything except a two and a four left. So, I'm looking at the characters to kind of get a better sense of what we have here. So, I'm taking Brian out on a first date, or vice versa, possibly. Um, There's a possibility that you're double dating, also. That is possible. That's true. Um, That's true. I am... Tracy are cousins of the Saudi prince, but Tracy is either a serial killer or an admirer of a serial killer. <laughs> That's right. Um, so, hmm. So right now, I have nothing really major um, pressuring me here. I'm here because, you know... I belong here, I've got a nice person on the arm, so I need something interesting. Well, you've uh, also got to get even with... That's true. Yeah, with somebody. With, with, with me. With, so with, oh. that suggests to me... Brett and I are getting even with someone. Yeah. Um, that suggests to me I need a weapon. <laughs> yeah, of course. So yeah. I'm going to take that three white die... Um, can I add an object to myself? No, no, but well, that, I got the I need. Really, and we already have an object in play, and mm. for four players, we need two needs, an object, and a location. So your choices are update the location above, update the object untoward, mm. give yourself, give uh, Brian Brent a need of some sort, or define the need that you and I have. That's right, because like, even though it's um, under my name, that need there would apply to both of us. Right. Okay. It's, yeah. They're tied to a relationship. They're not tied to a person. Although, if so, it were an object, then it might... Let's define that need. Um, so, we need to get even. Um, I would say... Um, let's make... Oh, I can't do that. Um... I love, and everyone must know you did it. That just makes things interesting. Yeah. Um, but let's go doing it um, for being richer. Okay. Get some class consciousness in there. Sure. Some class warfare. To get richer, mm -hmm. you're taking the five. Six. Six? Yep. yep. For being richer. Okay. What? Oh, I'm sorry. I was looking at something else. No worries. Yes. All right, Tracy, you're up. All right. Looking at the objects currently here. Mm. <laughs> We've got a 1, 3, or 5. Hel oh, I like the helicopter pad. <laughs> yeah. I'm taking the helicopter pad with the helicopter fueled and ready to fly. Oh, that's location? Yep. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Okay. All right, we're running low on dice here. All right, what's left here? We got mm. five, five, three, one. Yeah. Yep. Now, the very, last very wild. wild. That's one will be wild. Yeah, last so. one's wild. Yeah. yeah. Right, so you can see. clarify the untoward object or pick a category for the need between Brian and Brent who are going on their first date. <laughs> I think we have one more die than we should. Yeah, I think we forgot to um, Must have erase one of them. Fair enough. Above. Oh, so we got, we got above the helicopter pad. Yeah, yeah that's, the, that's oh, up above the party, right? Yeah, yeah, the the roof of the uh, the skyscraper. Yeah, because yeah, he's got the penthouse. Yeah, and then above that, it's the helipad. Oh yes. 
It's unfortunate that Need to Get Laid is unavailable to us. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you do have to get richer, which would tie in nicely with... uh, Hang on, guys. Mine. Okay. Hmm. So there's to get even, to enhance reputation, or to, to get richer. Hmm. I wouldn't do get even because already have that. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So who is it that needs the relationship or the um the, the need? Brent and myself. Okay, what's which relationship is that? Let's see, it's the oh the uh, the romance need. Date. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Right. One of us needs to get even, enhance our reputation, or get richer. And we shouldn't do even. So I'd, I'd go to the other. No, yeah, it's got to be something else. Unless, well, that way Brent would have to get even with everyone for multiple reasons. <laughs> <It's kinda laughs> <That's right. laughs> Gee, that would be strange to have a character who's trying to get even with everybody. It's five three, so it could be get there's richer. There's stuff nice. under enhancing reputation. Yeah, that there's yeah, that you can go some some interesting ways with that, especially if we save the wild card for that. Yeah. So that's what I'm gonna do. So that the uh, the first date twins there uh, <laughs> need to enhance their reputation. Nice. All right. Kill All right. Three. That kills the three. Yeah. And I'm going to leave the wild card for that. Okay. okay. And I will define the object. Mm. One and five. The prostitute or the Kincaid painting? <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm going to go with the prostitute here. Furious Russian prostitute with an impenetrable accent. Love it. All right. Let's see. All right. So I guess I'm the one to define... The need, huh? All right. So we're trying to enhance reputation. So our options are robbing from the rich, giving to the poor, destroying the evidence, savagery, being the smartest person, becoming famous, or being the person who can fix any situation. I kind of like that last one. (laughs) (laughs) Mm. The fixer. Yeah. Hmm. See, I like the um, robbing from the rich and giving to the poor because there's a lot of wealth. Yeah, um, there is a lot of money for getting thrown around here. Mm-hmm. And a lot of wealth sort of um, needs here within the, the group. Um, I think I'll go with that one. Okay. So, enhanced reputation. Robbing from the rich and giving to the poor. And one advantage of this situation, that's lost Tracy, is that uh, rich and poor are very relative terms. Yeah. <laughs> the poor is often just, you know, less wealthy than that guy. All right, then. Now we need to uh, flesh ourselves out a bit. Mm hmm. Let's see here. Okay. So now that we've got the relationships and details in place... Okay, so what's next? All right, so we need to uh, sort of define uh, who who we are and what those relationships are. Mm. So, uh, Bob, 
I'm trying to get back in. I was thinking that since our relationship is debtor and repo man, uh -huh. but I also have the need of enhancing my reputation by robbing from the rich and giving to the poor. Yeah, are you the it, debtor? Well, I think it would be hard to be the debtor. Okay. Right, because... Okay, the, so the re, the repo aspects, get him the money. I think I would have to be the repo man, yeah. 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 So, uh, so you, you repossess from the rich? I repossess from the rich, and I'm, you know, and at least I'm trying to enhance my reputation for giving to the poor. Mm. Uh, we he don't may not, he may not actually do it. How good I am at that part, you know. I just <laughs> that's that is unresolved uh, as of yet. But so I'm thinking in that case, um, since I'm the, you know cousin with the the, the Saudi prince, um, I think it makes sense for you to have finagled the first date with me. Oh yeah, sure. You are my in. Uh, and so I can get something I need off the Saudi prince, because mm. even with these wild parties, even though he's really rich, he's probably got some debts to certain individuals. Definitely. Yeah. All right. So I. Uh, all right. And I like the idea of me being uh, the female. Okay. And that I'm kind of bringing in a you know a, a, a non. Um, Family guy on my sh on my arm just to kind of piss everyone off. You know, I'm the uh, you know I'm, I'm I'm bringing in someone that everyone's kind of surprised that I bring to the party. Okay, all right, all right. All right. I can play with that. Sort of the whole uh, guess who's coming to dinner deal. Yes. <laughs> now that uh, uh, begs the question, Brian. Uh, how well known are you? Uh. I, I'm uh, well known in certain circles, you would say. Okay. You know, uh, I have sort of started stoking the fires of this, of this idea where. Uh, oh, thank you. Uh, where <laughs> I am, uh, you know, trying to make myself seem like this hero mm. to the people who are struggling in this economic climate, as it were. <laughs> but. Uh, uh, anybody who's anybody probably doesn't give a shit. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Good. So some so some here some folks here may have heard of you, may not have. I may have annoyed some members of the party. Uh, I have uh, written several blog posts <laughs> about uh, a certain Saudi prince who may own this apartment. Uh, I'm so glad I'm bringing you to the party. Exactly what he needed. Right. Somebody's getting used. Oh, wait a minute. That's everybody in this game. <laughs> so, Bob, which of us is the serial killer and which one's the admirer? I find it interesting to have the idea that, you know, the guy who's in debt is the serial killer. Because <laughs> it, okay. it, it gives an extra angle on why kill somebody. Okay. So, I could be the admirer. So my cousin is a serial killer admirer? Yeah, that's me. That works. That works very nicely. That's why I invited him to the party. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen his work? Yeah, I follow along. In, in, in fine Dexter, uh, Dexter ease, they refer to my, my person as the TPK killer. <laughs> for good Saudi Arabian names. I've gone with uh, Eric O'Brady just because uh, <laughs> as far as, as your character's name is, I probably am going to come up with it, I think. Okay. What do I owe you? Oh, right. So that's a good question. All right. So I'm, I'm, I'm here to collect because I know you're going to be there. Uh-huh. Uh, is, it, oh, it, about, is it my helicopter? Maybe it's Ooh. your helicopter. Maybe you put your it, helicopter up as collateral on a bet for the Olympics. Okay. Ooh. You were well, like, the the uh, helicopter is part of my relationship with Bob. It's not... The helipad. Oh, no, the helicopter. You're right. Yeah. There's a helicopter up there. Okay. Uh, 
the, yeah, that, the prostitute is somehow involved in this relationship. I mean, it's probably not what's being traded around or being repossessed, but it's part of your relationship. True. Yeah, how does, how does an angry hooker figure into this? Yeah, I don't know. Oh, there are so many ways. All right, I can so... Imagine she, like, oh, maybe that's she's right, at yeah. the party and neither of you invited her, and she knows who both of you are, and... She got, she got away from me before? <laughs> <laughs> oh! Escape. Yeah, well, maybe, uh, maybe, well, she's, she's what's of worth, right? So, yeah. um, maybe she's, she's wearing whatever it is that I need back. Ooh. Ooh, nice. Um. She, she's got, you know, an emeralds and diamonds or something like that. Yeah, that, right, you've just, you, you've taken, you know, your wealth in hard assets and put it on this hooker. Oh, okay, yeah. She's she's yeah. my uh my my arm candy for the night. Yeah. Okay. And that's it. it like that's, that's nice. all you've got is this 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 Russian is wearing. Right, and I'm not keeping it on my person because that's the obvious place to look for it. Yeah. So I've got yeah I've got everything right. tied up on in in that jewelry right there to keep to keep it portable. There you go. I like that. Mm-hmm. Okay, and we got a we need a little bit more meat on me and Tracy's relationship. What um hmm. So I'm a I'm a maniac. He's a fan. Does he does he know that I'm a serial killer? So there are a couple of interesting ways you could go there. I mean, it could be that you're kind of working together. Ooh, that's true. That's true. My protege. Yeah. This this actually could be his uh his his graduation assignment. Perfect. That's right. Okay, I'm gonna bounce out of the uh, the hangout. I mean, I'll be right back. Okay. That's interesting. Um, in fact, the Russian prostitute could be part of the the final exam. Hmm. Cool. All right. Uh, See, so I got a book of names. I'm trying to find a Arabic singing name. So, Tracy, how do you think our relationship is? We're cousins. Yeah, but are, are we close? I think we just we think we're about the same age, and that's about all we got in common. Like we go okay. hang out together. Mm-hmm. I like the idea of the two of us being someone estranged for some reason. Um, it could be that I bring these wild boys home. Yeah, you know, these, these sort of shocking, um, you know, non-traditional sort of boys home that, w- that would not be good matches for me as a Saudi princess, basically. But, and you've also got the shared need to get even for being richer. True. So even if you're not close, there's there's probably been at least some kind of level of commiserating, if not conspiracy. True. So that raises an interesting question. Are we trying to get even because we are richer or because someone else is richer than us? I think it's probably because the prince is richer than us. Yeah. That, that's what I was thinking. So has he, like... Um, sort of taking control of all of Daddy's money. Something along those lines. Well, it's his money. Like, well, I don't think we claim on the money. I think we're just pissed that he's richer than us. Yeah, I mean, I'm wondering is is there some something personal in it that he's somehow managed to um, screw us over? I'm trying to figure out what kind of. Um, you know, w- w- why him specifically? Well, he's got the money at his party. Oh, lots of people have money. I mean, we're, you know, we're all Saudis. We got, we know plenty of people <laughs> who have money. Um, so there's got to be something. Um, maybe we we could go, and, you know, the sort of ultra conservative route, and you know, we see this whole um, giant Olympics thing as horrible globalization. You know. Domination of the West, uh, and 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 we see this sort of the culmination of everything that, that's 
that's uh, you know, destroying our country, and so we're here to take it down. What do you think? I'm okay with that. <laughs> Tracy, any thoughts? Part is cutting in and out, killing applications. Say again? I'm not hearing you at all. That's part of <laughs> That's part of the problem. <laughs> uh -oh. I, I think he said that the audio is cutting in and out and he's killing some application. Ah, okay. Gotcha. Tracy, go like this if I'm right. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> you probably can't hear me that well. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Super awesome, fun time. <laughs> Dubon. Dubon and Shirabi. <laughs> yeah, Bob, you need a name, man. Yeah, I'm I'm thinking that he's he's got to be... Some sort of refined high society guy that's you know a serial killer in his spare time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm thinking he's he's maybe an earl or a duke of some sort since this is taking place in London. I like it. Cover your tracks well. He is the uh, the third royal highness, Duke of Winchester. <laughs> oh, Bob, I just had a thought for you. Yeah. Throw it out if you don't like it. Uh, I, I pr maybe like 10, 15 years ago, you were uh, a, a, the English gold medalist in like shooting or something. Ooh, ooh, yes, an Olympic tie-in. That's even better. Yeah. How about like shot putt, like something really useless <laughs> that could come up at a party? He is a a washed up. Um, oh, what's the what's the biathlon equivalent in the Summer Olympics? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I was thinking like something that you could still kill people with. Um, ah, I, I kind of like shot put because you could kill somebody with that. Yeah, you know what I mean? Or like the, the, yeah. the shot put killer. <laughs> it's, it, well, and it, it also depends on how you kill. I mean, you know, shot put requires that massive strength. That's right. So if you're you know cracking nets, that works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So he's a, he's a washed up. Um, oh, he finished fourth in the Olympics. He just, Whoa, just missed. So close. <laughs> fourth place. Oh. Can you guys see the um, the the uh, presentation document I'm working on? Uh, let me look. see here. Yeah, I up? don't have the other documents open. Um, I do not. I only okay. see one document there. Okay, let me see it because I. I hit it new. Let me see if I can bring it in. I've always found whenever I play this to do it, like to j actually just have a diagram with the relationships in it. Mm. Oh. Uh, where is it? Oh, here we go. Start prison. No, that's not what I want. <laughs> <laughs> Share. No. How did you actually share it within the? Uh, um, within the I hangout. Google Docs and clicked on the doc itself. Yeah. Um, and then I hit, I think there was an OK at the bottom. You can also go to Google Docs in the Hangout and click the Add button. And that should well, let you... Maybe that's what I missed was the Add. So if you uh, go to Google, the Google Docs tab at the top, um, you should see in the left-hand column, is there a, either a tiny or significant left-hand column? A column of some kind. Oh, there we go. There we go, yeah. Okay. Sometimes it likes to hide itself. Diagram. Yeah, I see it. You need permission to access this item. There we go. Looks like it's still um, private to you, though. Oh, okay. I thought I just shared it with everybody. I will try it again. Could be up oh, there. It is. Okay. Nope. Still need permission. Nope. <laughs> okay. Let's try that again. Send request. It looks like it's trying to open for me. And. Yep. I got it. Check. Okay. Select. I'm getting something. There we go. Yeah. Cool. cool. Let's get started. Okay. Nice. <laughs> no, ah. I can't. No, I can't see it. 
<laughs> oh, now it just disappeared. Yeah, it's thinking really, really hard. Ah, uh, technology. There we go. It's back on my end. Great. Okay. I got I it. See it. There we go. Nice. We're good. Okay. All right. So, Tracy, is it any better now? Yes. Much better. Cool. So I was thinking, um, what if the two of us are trying to get rid? Of, so a couple of different ways we could we could go with this. One <laughs> is that, um, like, we could be like the ultra conservative um, cousins who see this Saudi prince as like colluding with the evil Westerners, um, and is throwing this massive party to, um, and we see it as this horrible conspicuous consumption of of wealth, and so we're kind of trying to take him down a peg because we see him as not holding on to our traditional values. That's one way of taking it. I just want to waste his money. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe a Brent's character is more motivated than your character, but to the that same works. ends. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. That works. Yeah. So, um, and that, that makes sense for, for this sort of Robin Hood uh, thing I've got going with Eric. Eric yeah. Brady. You've, you've created yourself a complicated relationship, yeah. That works. Do you go by Shar or Shar Ali? I th that's a good question. Um, I think I'll go by Shar. Sure. Shar, good. I can say that. But I'll use my full name at every opportunity. Okay. <laughs> okay. Bob, what's your character's name? His name is Julius Edwards. Nice. He's a washed-up fourth-place Olympian from the British track and field team. He, 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 was a, he was a weight guy, so shot put and hammer throw. Okay. The doc. And he's, is he a noble? Oh, yes. He's, he's the, uh, coincidentally, he's the fourth Earl of Winchester. Oh. And, 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 and by that, that means he is currently fourth in line to the title of Earl of Winchester. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So he's, he's got a lot of uh, really bad, uh, you know, pent up aggression and uh, a little bit of a Napoleon complex with the hereditary titles. Do you think he might be planning to have certain unfortunate accidents happen? Oh, the yeah. Some, somebody's going to have an accident. Yeah. <laughs> in fact, so might admire to you because. You're, of your shot putting, or because I have to know that's, you're a murderer? That is an awesome, awesome angle on it, because it both. just says that he's a fan of me. It doesn't necessarily yeah. mean that he's a fan of me as a serial killer. That's right, that's right. <laughs> nice. Hmm. We'll, we'll see how much of a fan he is tonight. Maybe I'm, a, maybe I'm a fan of you as a shot putter, but I happen to also know he's a serial killer. <laughs> that's right. That just made it better once you found out. Yeah. You're like, he, he's still doing it, you know? He's still out there. Yeah. <laughs> That well, you were you were a big because really when you think about it you know and are you are you everyone murder it, like random like not honestly peasants but like civilians like normal people now I'm thinking that he's he's much more of a a, a person who has a lot of deep seated hatred for various people in his family and <laughs> there are many people in his family who have died uh, inexplicably violent deaths okay yeah okay all right it's a big family. Uh, along with people who have slighted him in his performance, too. Like, you know, there's a couple of sports commentators that have disappeared. And <laughs> <laughs> well, you were there's a great Alan Davis movie where he uh, plays, like, the 12th Earl of something, and he manages to kill, like, all of yeah, the that's how he got. Yeah, that's how he got to the fourth. <laughs> <laughs> what about the shot putters one through third in the Southampton Olympics? Are you kidding me? Oh, those are well. I'm I'm thinking that one of them might be here at the party. Oh, there's all sorts of Olympic royalty here at the party. Totally. Or have some sort of tragic accident. The shot putting arm. Well, we do know that life is going to change forever for the prince tonight. Oh That's right. yes. That's right. So, I mean, for all we know, there are explosives rigged all over the room. How'd you know? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's supposed to know about that yet. Nice. Heck, I might have planted them. That would be funny, actually, if, like, I and you are both trying to blow this place up. <laughs> and, like, we come across each other's handiwork. Oh, I, now we're drifting into scenes. No, wait, we yeah. haven't done that yet. Yeah, I know. No, no, no. Just, just throwing it out there. <laughs>
All right, but Brian, you get your character's name. Uh, Brian, what was Ready. your guy's name? Uh, we'll go with Char, S-H-A-R. It's all in the doc, Bob. I don't know. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, Bob and oh. I right now are looking at his um, diagram, mm-hmm. which I actually find very convenient because I can see it all in one screen. Mm. How do I get to the diagram? Um, you should go be over able to... to on the left-hand sidebar. There should okay. be a penthouse fiasco. Yeah, yeah, point at your screen. Look over yeah, here. Right, right, right over there. <laughs> yeah. Over, over there. <laughs> the same place... You, oh, you may have the document up from before. It should be shared with you. Oops, I don't want that. Could you paste a link to it in the chat or something? Oh. Yeah, let me let me try that. Hang on. This is weird. I have the dock up. One or more participants needs access to this document. Oh, uh-huh. okay. Yes, you um, should let that participant in. In fact, I did. Here we go. Can edit, can edit. How about anyone with the link? Can get in here. Yeah, anyone with a link. That's the best kind of Google Doc. The doc that feels private but isn't. Are you able to see it now, Tracy? I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) If you guys are using Hangout lower, I went ahead and I put my character. Yeah, that's what I was going to do. Thank you. So now I've lost the video on the Google Doc. <laughs> or on the thing. I just have in the Hangouts window I've got the, the doc where the video was. I'm you should be able to click uh, now I can point. Um you should be able to click on the Google Docs button at the top. Yeah. And that should hide it. Oh, yeah, there we go. Good. Uh Hangout Lower Thirds, where'd that go? Still don't see the link to the presentation. Yeah, it's still yelling at me that you need access, but it's, I'm saying give access. Mm-hmm. There we go. The way it what appears for me is just a, like a little box right under the document on the left hand side. Box. Uh, I am. Rawi Ab Hasina. Oh, I gotta turn it off first. Yes. Julius Edwards. Washed up fourth place Olympian. Very nice. Okay. Alright, and I'm dropping the uh, link into the chat. Cool. There we go. Aha. Uh-huh. Aha. Uh-huh. Yay! Okay. okay can uh, I take a minute and go grab some tea? Yeah, go yeah. for it. I think that's a good idea. I'm going to grab one more beer before we go into the Act 1. That's a good idea, too. Yeah. Beer. And Tracy can work on trying to get the doc to work. <laughs> yeah, once you shared it to me, it shows us where the docs. So there we go. Oh, it stopped with the whole little exclamation point. There, there. we go. All right, I will be right back as well.
Backup beer. All right. I got my big water bottle. There you go. I like your idea. Yes. What do you have? You got a harpoon? Mm-hmm. All right. I'm finishing off my long trail blackberry wheat, Ooh. which is almost done. So I have here one of... Samuel Adams Noble Pills, which is an excellent beer. I don't really don't like IPAs, but I like that. Oh, it was Bob. I am back. Yeah. Harpoons. That is strong, actually, flavor-wise. Which, uh, which harpoon is it? It's an IPA. Yeah. Hmm. I had their uh, summer beer for the first time yesterday, or at least the first time in a long while, mm. and I did not like it. Really? The harpoons? Yeah. I'm a huge fan of uh, Ten Men of Summer. Oh, well then, we're not friends anymore. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I was very excited that I could find it here in Denver. So. There's a lot of good microbrews in Denver. Yes, but Tracy is a Bostonian, and he needs to drink Boston beer. That's a good point. He's, you know, resolved the fact that he's not going to have another brick red till PAX East. So he's, he's got to at least enjoy his, his Sam Adams out of the bottle. Makes sense to me. All right, so we, we've got... So we start off, we've got eight black dice. Yep. Eight black dice. Mm-hmm. Uh, I see him. Am I going first? Do, well, I was gonna. I was gonna ask. Does anybody have any strong ideas for a scene? And I was, if anyone did, I was gonna suggest that person kick it off. Well, the the rules of the game are whoever grew up in the smallest town goes first. Oh, oh. is it? Yeah. Hmm. Um. Right, well, uh, my town wasn't that small. I mean, we had there was two hundred people in my class in high school. I grew up in a town of 30,000 people. Let's see here. Yeah, see, I, I don't actually no know. The pop- I can look it up on Wikipedia. <laughs> um, let's see here. Uh, uh, 15,000. Oh, all right. all right. So you're oh, winning. I think you're a winner there. I think my, my graduating class is about the same size as Brian's. Well, let's okay. see what it says here. Population... 26,000, yeah, so you win. Okay. Rent. Well, I do like the idea of stumbling across, of me stumbling across um, Julius's uh, <laughs> manipulation of the surrounding environment. Um, the question are is... So, are you establishing I, the scene? Or say what? Yeah, you've got to establish, yeah. or do you want us to establish the scene? So um, your choice is establish or resolve? Yeah. You guys establish. I don't have a oh, wrong idea. Okay. Oh. So, so you want a good resolution or a bad resolution, right? He gets to pick that, right? He doesn't, he does. he doesn't have to pick it up front, though. He can wait and see what we give him. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay then. I'm cool with waiting. All okay. Right. Let's see here. All right, uh, so Rent's character is Char. He's a cousin. Uh, is he who? even for being richer? He needs to earn... Rep for being Robin Hood. I guess that's. All right. What What about this? So, um, so, Char shows up with his. Uh, her. Her. Yeah. Oh, sh- yeah. Sh- Char's a girl. Yes. Yeah, so, that's right. So, yeah. So sh- Char shows up at the party. This is, it's kind of the the entrance there. She arrives at the party uh, on O'Grady's arm. Mm-hmm. Who's you know looking like an, an Irish mob dirtbag? I'm sure <laughs> uh, at this high society event, and you know the first person to see her arrive, you know, is her cousin Dubin. Yeah. And so you know, and uh, so the general 
idea of the scene is, you know, maybe Dubin's going to be upset with her for showing up with that because it's going to screw over his chances to get even. She's, you know, she's being too obvious about it or, or something like that. So I don't know. I imagine I'd be pretty happy with it. Like, aha. <laughs> okay, too. We like, do like, see, see how, how you're going to take that and move it to the next level, you know. Right. So, so is, right. is the scene just Char and uh, Dubon meeting at the party? Well, well, O'Grady's in the scene also. You know, he, oh, yeah, yeah. They, they so, just showed up. It, it's so the entrance. It's so Char, Char and Eric are hand in hand, or arm in arm, mm-hmm. entering the party. Mm-hmm. I'm wearing a full long dress to the floor. Something really, you know, elegant and and covering up like almost every inch from like shoulders down, um, but clearly very expensive earrings. My hair has been very carefully dolled up for like hours. Um, so I'm walking in and I've got Eric O'Grady on my on my arm. How are you dressed? Oh well, I've got um, my white uh, tank top undershirt on. <laughs> and I'm wearing a... Do you got track l- pants? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> this is a coat. very intentional outfit, I assure you. And I've got uh, a long, like, thin black leather jacket that goes down to, like, my ankles. Kind of like Gambit's jacket, but black. Nice. It's like a trench coat? It looks like a, trench, a leather trench coat. All with right, my, cool. you know, with my undershirt showing underneath it because it's open. <laughs> and, uh... I've got a uh, like dark blue jeans with you know rips in the knees, and I'm wearing a black leather belt that has like little metal studs on it because it's cool. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Fedora? No, no, no fedora. This is my, I got my my natural like brownish red curly. I imagine like a bowler hat, like. A <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, and a bowler hat. Bowler hat. And a bowler hat. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Okay. So so we walk in. Um, okay. Now, yeah, here's an interesting that. question. So um, we walk up to um, Dubon. We're obviously turning heads already. I'm looking very proud. Um, and I'm like, clearly, like, scanning the crowd to see who is noticing me. Right. Yep. You, want, you, want to no- to, you want to see people noticing. Absolutely. Um, and so I step up to Dubon. Now, uh, Dubon, are you one of those guys who have, like, you know, a, a crowd of half a dozen girls around you, or what kind of thing? I I didn't bring a date. I just showed up alone because I wanted to start some trouble. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to show up and congratulate you on your uh, in your fine choice here. I'm going to do the congratulations part in Arabic so that. Uh, we'll be <laughs> so I walk up to you. I, I'm assuming that you're going to be a little outraged. Um, that's probably just be, um, you know completely. Um, you know, m- me projecting onto you. I'm assuming okay. you're gonna be outraged, of course. Okay, so there, there's there's your there's your point of contention. She wants him to be upset. Exactly. Me to be upset. Right. Um, All right. So I walk up and say, Dubon, long time no see. Yes. Oh, hello, hello there. Oh, <laughs> I I like your date. This is in Arabic. <laughs> How kind of you. Well, of course, let me introduce you to Mr. O'Grady. I, I don't know what the hell any of you guys are saying. <laughs> Does somebody in this place uh, talk I'll English? Say, it's going to be a long like, night. Because, hi, hi, Dubon. My name, or, <laughs> hi, my name is Dubon. The, the caviar is quite excellent. And I'll point you to the table a little bit. Oh, yeah. That's, uh, that's like uh, the stuff that comes off of a fish's anus, right? Exactly. <laughs> Uh, and it's quite expensive. Eric is a repo man. You don't uh, say. Yeah. Oh, you know, right now that's what pays the bills. I'm more of what you might call a an amateur reporter. Yes. I'm very into new media. All right. Whatever that means. <laughs> you yeah, have, some ch- have some champagne. It's really expensive. <laughs> <laughs> you approve? Uh, you can do whatever you want, Char. And I'll add in Arabic as long as. Uh, by the end of the- hmm. So, so at this point, we I think. Make that yeah, we gotta. Uh, so Brent can choose 
his ending for sure. Is she, is she going to get her way? Is she going to outrage him in some no, way? No, she's not. She's not. Okay. She's definitely not. Are you sure? Because um, because I'm going to take a bottle of champagne and, and drink out of it. <laughs> I'm sure you will. Um, but that's not me getting my way. Me and getting my way my is a pissing everyone off. Okay. All right. All right. Um. So she, so she seems to have a, an unsuspecting or a, an unintended ally in this. Yes, everyone is getting pissed off, but for some reason, Duvan is not. No, what, actually, what I like is the idea that everyone's just kind of shrugging this off. Well, I what I want Ooh. is to get your I would like to get your boy, uh, your date drunk. Mm. So he'll make an ass of himself. He's on um, that. Your brain and that would not be good for me. Actually, I I think that's good. I think I am so pissed off that this has not done anything, that I just say, well, I'll leave you two boys to it, and I will make my rounds. All right, so despite her best efforts, no one seems to care. Exactly. Cool. It's, al- it's almost as though it were expected. Right. Yeah, so, <laughs> uh, Brian, does Eric, you know, after he swipes a bottle of champagne, you know, the whole bottle starts chugging, does he pull out, like, a crumpled up dollar bill and hand it to <laughs> Like a <laughs> No, absolutely not. No. <laughs> All right, so Shark, gets Shark gets a black die. No, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Did that's that did not work out right. And then no, so and I think off and she's pissed. Yeah, like in movie style, like you know, they sort of zoom out to the whole room and he's there kinda, you know, acting himself and yet everything's just going on around him almost like he's a ghost. Mm-hmm. She, she kinda walks off in a huff. Mm-hmm. And she met mutter something in Arabic about, you know, uh filthy decadent westerners, you know, <laughs> have no sense of of, of propriety. Yeah, that's a good point because this is this is a a London party. It's not necessarily like you know a Saudi family party. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, they're they're probably you know underage girls, you know, drinking to to distraction and cocaine going all over right. the place. I mean, it's, it's nuts. <laughs> all right. Okay. So cool. And seat. Cool. So who does Shar give that die to? Yeah, mm. that's right. Um, One. <sighs> So remind me how this works. I have to give a so, die to one of the people in the scene. Well, right? anybody, no, anybody, anybody at the table. Anyone you want to mess with? There's no yeah. in-game reason as to why you're giving it. It's just okay. you, you um, can do a player. You feel like it. Any I, I motivation. Think just to make things interesting, can I give a, a black or a white die, or does it have to be black? It has, it has to be, be the die, the die you, got, you have. Which is black. Ah, okay. <laughs> it has to be the die you received this scene. Hmm. In this case, I think let's. Let's give a black die to Julius. All right. Is that right. my die I'm giving, or is it another yep. black die? It's your die. Your it's black die. Right. Your black die over to Julius. Yeah. Cool. And in Act One, the dice you receive, you give to another player. In Act Two, the dice you receive, you keep. Gotcha. All right. So Brent was D. So the next person around the table is Tracy, right? Um, yeah. Right. Um. <laughs> I wish our little video screens were in order. I wonder if you can move them. Hmm? Nah, not for lack of trying. I just tried to click and drag them. But yeah, no, 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 unfortunately. Google. Get it's actually that. alphabetical by name. Oh. Hmm. All right, I'm going to establish a scene. And I want uh, Eric and myself to be in the scene. Okay. I want... I want us both to be getting drunk, but I want Eric drunker. Okay. And I want to show him the helicopter. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So, so, um, so uh, have we established whose helicopter it is? I belongs to the prince. Oh, okay. It belongs to the prince. Uh, I assume no, it's, 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 I mean, it's a helicopter pad. You can only have so many helicopters on right. it. Yeah. It's, it's, I don't know. I don't, uh, <laughs> And I know where the keys are for it. Oh, okay. Oh. All right, all right. All right so well, I, know where, sh- I know where the prince keeps them, so... Uh, but the scene <laughs> is we're taking our champagne and we're going up to the helicopter yeah. pad. Uh, okay. I show Eric where the keys are. There's a bunch of other keys there. Okay. Probably fancy vehicles and whatnot. I grab the helicopter keys. I grab Eric. I ask Char if she wants to come. She's too busy. <laughs> and then uh, we head on up. There's a uh, the elevator doesn't go up there. There's some stairs that go up, mm-hmm. and there's some guy guarding it. But I, you know, he knows that my family lets me through with Eric. 
Now, here's an interesting question. It says the helicopter is fueled and ready to fly. Does that mean it's, like, live and the rotors are going? I heard live. And <laughs> no, I, th I think it's ready to go, but it's not on yet. Okay. Yeah, gotcha. it would be crazy no, no, if, but, it, if it was no. running the whole party, right? <laughs> This is a crazy party. I did a crazy party. <laughs> but yeah, that, that doesn't mean that somebody who is not a helicopter pilot isn't in yeah. there with it running right now. It's yeah, that yeah. kind of party. Well, now, I can imagine if we want, Eric and I could fire it up. Yeah, Ooh. we probably could. So I say, hey, Eric, check this out. Look at this thing. And I, I'm using the keys to open the door to get in. Cool. Oh, this is a fine machine you have here. This yes. is top-notch uh, helicopter. It's a helicopter, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll put I'll put the keys in so I can turn all the lights on. Uh huh. Oh. And I, it's like, now hand me that bottle of champagne that you uh, swiped and let's share it. Oh sure, sure. Yeah. <laughs> hey, don't worry, I got another one right here. Pull right. An, another <laughs> bottle of champagne out of my large leather jacket. I okay. Mean, hand it. <laughs> on. So so uh, you're uh, like uh you're like uh the Char's brother, right? It, it's a long, complicated story. Yeah. Oh. 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 It's 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 one of those families where. Uh, it, it, it's a big family. Yeah. Uh, oh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We've got families like that. <laughs> Let me tell you about my uncle sister. I'll tell you. Oh. We call we call him Welsh. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we're just getting drunk in the helicopter. And what is uh what does Dubin want to get out of this? <laughs> I don't necessarily want to get anything out of it. I just want to show him the helicopter so it will come up later, pretty much. And I want to accidentally leave the keys in there. Well, yeah. So now he's got somebody who he knows is sort of a fringe element, drunk with unfortunate knowledge. Correct. Right? <laughs> so that's, that's pretty good. Like, so is, is there something you want to tell... Eric, that would, you know, get him in trouble later if he told somebody about. They're no. deep. I think no. Uh, uh, the point of the scene is that Eric now knows that there's a helicopter up here. Up here, it's ready right. to go, and the keys are available. Could come up and just attempt to use it. I think that's so, fine. That's so, a fine scene. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So 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 here's the question. Okay. That knowledge has been transferred, right? Yeah, correct. How does this end? For Dubin, would it be very, very bad for him if, say, the prince's personal bodyguard were to witness this? I think this? it's good because I don't think there's any way this could be bad for me. Yeah, personally. because one, you know, it's not like he was being secretive about it. Right. Uh, he's probably brought people up there before, and two, you know, he's trying to make a fiasco of things. Okay. Yeah. So and let's he's give just him lit the fuse. Well, I say we give him a white die then. Let's give him a white yeah. die. Okay, uh, and I'm gonna give that white die to Brian. Oh, cool. All right, so that goes to Eric. Okay. So next around is Julius. All right, so so here's the scene, okay? Uh, this actually takes place right after the helicopter scene. Okay. All right. Um, so Brian and Dubin have come back down from the roof. Uh, uh -huh. Dubin is letting Brian lead the way as he stumbles back into you know the uh, the ballroom or the you know the the big open living room party area floor there, uh, so he goes in first and just as uh, Dubin is about to step out of the stairwell that comes down from the roof, uh, Julius pops out of the shadows, like right behind him, you know elbow you know forearm to his throat pulling him back into the into the into the darkness there. Oh, cool. Okay. So this is Wait, a scene between Julius and Dubin. Yes. All right. Wait, I'm a fan of yours, so why are you yeah. being so awesome here? Oh, well, hang on. It's about to come to that. All right. Okay. So he grabs you. He pulls you over away where nobody can see, and he's like, why are you making such a spectacle of yourself? You know why we're here. Dude, I don't know why you're here. I invited you. You invited me here for a reason. Don't play games with me. <laughs> I love your handiwork. I want to see what you do. Exactly. And I can't perform at a peak level if you are creating too much attention. So, so what do you want me to do, Julius? So here's what I need you to do. Look in the window over there. So, you know, it's like the fi a fire door type deal that, you know, comes into the, into the room. Yeah. Look over there and you see... Are we looking uh, into the party? Thing? Into the party, yes. Right. See. You see the leggy Russian girl over there with all the jewelry on. Yeah, she looks like Zsa Gabor on a bad day. Yes, well, I wouldn't tell her that. 
You think you... <laughs> if I thought you were making a scene right now, it'd be ten times worse if she were to make a scene. And let's just say that making scenes is her specialty. Anyways, here's what I need you to do. I need you to babysit her. I need you to keep her busy. I need you to keep her from making a scene. Okay? Can you handle that? If you want to be part of what I'm doing, I need you to do this for me. For you, I'll do this thing, you ask. Okay, so here's the question I, I pose for the group, okay? Is Dubin dependable enough for this to be a good thing for me? <laughs> so far, no. I'm not very confident in Dubin's abilities. I don't know. He seems like he sort of just goes with things. I'm, I think this is black. Okay, yeah, I, I, I tend to agree. I think that, you know, me bringing Dubin along on this is actually going to be bad for me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, with that in mind, uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, take the black die you all seem to be happily offering up. Mm -hmm. I'm going to uh, hand it to Brian. Oh, okay. okay. Here, give him a <laughs> black and white mix. Um, okay, and at, at this point, uh, so Dubin's going to go ahead and agree to keep an eye on Irina for me Perfect. and keep her, keep her out of trouble while I take care of certain things that need to be taken care of. And uh, as he's walking away, I give him one of those little pep talk type things. By the way, you did a good job finding that helicopter. I think it's going to come in handy. And then, scene. <laughs> yeah, well, I know you can fly one. Oh, I don't plan on flying it. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, so it's my turn now. Yeah. Um, I would like you guys to establish the scene for me. Okay. Hmm. So you're coming down. You see. You you, you may have seen this uh, uh, conversation. So your attention may be drawn to the prostitute. Um. Yeah, I I like the idea that I didn't notice who he was, but he noticed who I am. Oh. Mm -hmm. So he knows that I owe him a ton of money, and I was too focused in on on Duvin to notice who Duvin was coming down the stairs with. Nice. So I think um, the next scene might actually be um, Eric right. and Julius. I mean, okay. Eric could just come up and say, hey, you know, <laughs> where's my money? Oh, we just lost Tracy. Sure. Oh. So, so, you know, Dubin leaves that little stairwell, and before Julius can, Eric goes back in. Goes back in where? To the stairwell to talk to. Oh, well, so okay, yeah. So right as right as Dubin's kind of leaving. Yeah. So so as Dubin the, leaves. You know, Julius was and... going to like wait five seconds and follow. Right. Yeah. Just j just as Julius is opening the door, yeah. uh, <laughs> you know, Eric steps in right there. Right there. Yep. Nice. And okay. I think, I think the matter at hand is fairly obvious. So. Okay. Yep. So I go. Oh, hey, Juliet. I remember you. You know, funny thing. Uh. Uh. Uh, you owe me. I think it's uh, I think it's three million dollars. I'm not laughing. No, I I can see that. It's funny when you laugh. It's audible. Right now, pretty quiet. I know you're a quiet guy, but uh, still the money. Remember, you decided to bet on the opening ceremonies. Kenneth Branagh still showed up. You owe me three million dollars. I remember. Yeah. I and of course. The person of my heritage and my lineage would always make good on his bets. I believe that, which is why I was kind of, it was kind of odd. I called you, line seemed to be dead, used the email, bounced back, looked you up on Twitter. You seem not to be tweeting. I've been I thought you'd busy. be big. It's Olympics. Nope. Yes. And here I am. I'm not keeping a low profile. Oh, Plenty sure. Plenty visible. Yeah. I even did an interview yesterday. Oh. Oh, I must have missed that. It's a well, big one. You know... It you was know. on CNBC spam. Oh, yeah, no, I don't do that. I'm more of into new media. Uh, maybe you've read my <laughs> blog. It's uh, pretty good. Yeah, don't do the blogs. No. Look, no. anyways, Eric, I'm sure we can be reasonable here. Sure. I have a few business arrangements that are in process right now, shall we say? Sure, sure, sure. And let's just say that uh, this time I've got my bets covered. Once you meet back with me later this evening, I think uh, 
I don't like the stairwell. What about the roof? You know, uh, that sounds great. The roof is is nice. It's nice. It's quiet. You like quiet? I like quiet, yes. You do. You do. You do. <laughs> Would you like a drink? No, thank you, though. You know that I don't drink. I do. I do. I do. <laughs> <laughs> right. So he, he's agreed to meet a serial killer on the roof later this evening. Perfect. I know you're but a serial killer. I know that. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, Brian, you did let us sort of establish this, so you get to pick... Uh, Oh, so I actually, think, I, so actually, I think good, bad. So, um, you know, if if you, you pick good, I think we we you get to steer this away. Yeah, I'm not going to get to. You're not going to agree to meet me up on the roof. Uh, I like the fact that like we've established the fact that Eric, you know, for all of his drinking, notice Julius waited and has come come in. So. You know, Eric could have more going on here. I, I could kind of I, go either way on this. I, I think it's good, and I'll tell you why. Okay. Mm. Because Julius knows about the roof, vaguely, but I've been to the roof. Mm. And even though I'm drunk, I'm used to being drunk. You know, <laughs> I operate relatively well drunk. Uh -huh. <laughs> I know that there's where the keys are for the helicopter. I know what's in the helicopter. I know that there's a bodyguard up on the roof, and he's seen my face, not Julius's. Okay. And he's seen my face with one of the prince's cousins. Gotcha. Yeah. So I don't think the roof is nearly uh, as nice of a place to kill me as Julius thinks it is. Okay. I agree. Okay. So I'll, I'm going to say I'm going to take the white die. Okay. And, and gets I'm going to give the white die to Shar. To Shar. Okay. Hmm. All right. And so unfortunately, that, that's whose turn it is. But Indeed. Um, I have a few thoughts here. Give him a ping. I'm back. Welcome oh. back. Oh, Sorry. you're Good. just in time. Oh, all right. a, I gave you a white die at the end all of the right. scene. You gave um, me a white die. Oh, I'm sorry. That's right. I gave Brent a white <laughs> die at the end of the scene. We um, just uh, established that I am going to meet Julius on the roof later. Theoretically for payment. Mm hmm Okay. So I think this is the point at which Char is going to go around and try to rig this place. Um, I think what she wants to do is basically um, blow it. Oh, okay, we're going with that, huh? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> um, so I think she's going to start going around and... Um, now, the, the issue I'm seeing, and I, I'd like your guys' thoughts on this, is how she would go, go about doing that. Has she already, like, planted charges? Does she have something with her? How would Maybe she do she that? Like, like a uh, cake delivery that's actually a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> you can't go wrong with the evil caterers. <laughs> um, hmm. Well, since we have this, this shared need to earn a rep for being Robin Hood, Mm -hmm. Maybe even though originally our meeting was more for our own ends, mm -hmm. perhaps we started talking to each other and getting each other's ideals in our heads. Yeah. Maybe I've got explosives in this jacket of mine. Nice. How about like you actually deliver deliver like a literal Trojan horse, like a big art artifact that's actually full of. Uh, oh, should we brought a, a housewarming gift. Yeah. I well, like that. And like you something big and gaudy that you had delivered. That's showing up right now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. You, you, you know, with big pomp and ceremony handed over to him. Or big, something gaudy, like and Irish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would get rolled into the middle of the party. It's a huge stone Celtic cross, but it's hollow on the inside. It's not really stone. <laughs> or like I, something like, uh, like horribly sexist, like, <laughs> like a large busted naked. Woman statue, or something, <laughs> you know, something that go against all the sensibility, the conservative sensibility. Yeah, I, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, something yeah. that's ridiculous. Oh, it, maybe it's like the, uh, it's 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 a it's a naked bust of the first woman to win a gold medal. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> Perfect. Because it's an Olympic party, and that's how we justify the president. Right. <laughs> Of the first one to win this this latest one, the, the 2012 Olympics? No, no, it, ever, ever, ever. So now oh, okay. she's like, you know, somebody we should be respectful of. Okay. <laughs> she's somebody's great-grandmother. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love it. So so let's have that this season. So actually, here we go. Um, uh, what if, like, the prince is making his appearance at this point? So we're trying... So this gets delivered as he's showing up and now we get to kind of present him with this gift. Okay. What's the we here? Is it just you? <laughs> me or is it me, or is it you and me? Oh, yeah, no, I'm I, assuming I that like, I left it up to Eric to decide exactly what it would be, so I don't know that it's like <laughs> some naked check. That's right. She wrote me a check right, so that I could <laughs> purchase, so I could acquire the delivery mechanism because I've got more of a background in these sort of things. Wait, so, I don't you know, know. so who knows it's a bomb? Uh, I think I we think both know it's a bomb. Her. We both know it's a bomb. Okay. But you didn't tell me or any... Or no. No, no, no. Okay. I didn't. <laughs> you know what would be great, though, is if Eric doesn't know it's a bomb when he's the one delivering it. <laughs> so so even though I made all the arrangements, I don't know it's a bomb? Well, I didn't say it made sense. I just said it would be great. <laughs> uh, hmm. I, I think if she doesn't even know what it is, then I probably have to know it's a bomb, yeah. right? That's true. Yeah. Well, especially it's a hollowed out thing. Like, and also, Eric is the one that could probably get you explosives pretty straightforward. Those okay. IRA, IRA contacts. This, 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 Eric has been, become much shadier than I originally <laughs> You're yeah, welcome. He's in a romance relationship. He, like, and I guess the money relationship. He's no, it's fine. It's fine. fine. It's fun. All right. All right. Not part so of the we're gonna, relationship. Th- here comes the, the gift. So. Someone probably has to play Sal. True. Yeah, in this scene. I can uh, be Sal. You can. Okay, sure. All right. So All am right, I so talking? Am I giving a toast? Yeah. So you're. Right, a, so. A, you're a, you're about to give the toast. You've gotten right. everybody quiet, and um, you've got a, a balcony on this floor as well. Okay. And uh, as you start talking, I'll be right like, behind you. Welcome to my you, party. You, out, out the big, huge glass windows, you see this stone bus. It's like ten feet tall. Get <laughs> lowered down onto the balcony. Okay. Because we had another helicopter fly it in because it's that big. You know, you can't right. bring it up through the elevator. I'm like, hello and welcome to my party. What is that thing? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And I look at you and, and say, what is that thing? <laughs> <laughs> all right. And, and since it was so quiet, I, all eyes are on me, and I go. Oh, so, this is for you. This is great. I knew you always wanted this. This is Judith Arnold Nixon. She was the first female gold medalist in swimming. And I know you love swimming because you have a pool. We thought, we, not just myself, but Shar here, who oh, is... Oh, you're with Shar. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. We are dating, and we were talking after sex one night about how much you would love something like this, and that we just had to give it to you for your party. So, yes, yes, everyone. Well, thank you, Shar. And you're so welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> thank, thank you, drunk Irishman. <laughs> perhaps, uh, perhaps Shar will introduce me. Oh, oh, certainly. Please, please, please put that in the middle of the party here. Yes, move, move the table to the side. Yes, right next to the edge of the pool. Truly. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. I'm, I'm saying this is exactly what Char wants. <laughs> in the middle of the room. It is, actually. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I'm accepting it humbly, so uh, I'll, like, I'll let you put it in the, I'll put it in the middle of the room. Um, let, let's extend it a little bit. I want to pull Eric aside and say, what is, what is, what is that? <laughs> it's the delivery mechanism. It's filled with explosives. <laughs> <laughs> How many it's, times it's, did we go great. over this? Everyone will gather all around it. They'll steal it at her, at her boobies. <laughs> and then it'll blow up and everyone will be there. Next, the blowing of the up. <laughs> Look, have you at least found a way for us to get out of here quickly? 
oh, I have. You're going to love this. You're going to love this. They have been washing the windows. And? I was up on the roof, and we had the keys to the helicopter, and from the angle of the helicopter, I could see the trolley was still set up. We could go right down the side of the building. Helicopter. Yeah, by the helicopter. It's going to be great. Fine. Okay. Fine. Fine. Wonderful. How long do we have? Oh, we've got a good, you know, hour and 15 minutes. (laughs) Are you sure? Yeah, roughly. (laughs) Okay, one hour from now, we are going upstairs. Yes. Strike that. One hour from now, I am going upstairs. You better be with me. I'll better. I'll be there waiting. Good. Good. Great. He strikes off. And scene. So who gets the white die? Well, who mm. established and who was? He asked us. Brent, Brent established. Brent established. Okay. Yeah. So and we gave him the white die, and he, he just wanted to extend die. the scene a little. Right. Um. Give that white die to someone. I'm gonna give that to Brian. <laughs> All right. Okay. Cool. Now it's uh, Tracy's turn. Yep. Was that Brent scene? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, let's see. Here. I guess I'm going to talk to the prostitute. All right. Okay, so this scene is. I'm uh, not surprised. Dubin and Arena. Anyone else? Yeah. I'm wondering if I should show her the helicopter. <laughs> too. <laughs> <laughs> You know what would be interesting if she could fly if, it. Now that I've heard about the helicopter, I've gone up there to check it out. Oh. So, yeah. like, you take her up to the helicopter and we meet up there. Okay. Oh, yeah, I'm you thinking, probably have to talk without Eric around. I, I think my own, like, I'm trying to pick up chicks. I don't really want to pick up this prostitute, but it's the only gig I've got. So, mm-hmm. I'm going to go up to show her the helicopter. And I think it should come out as part of the scene, that she knows how to fly a helicopter. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> like, cause she, she's Russian, right? So maybe she's ex-military something or other. Oh, well, I have got a question for you, though. She, she's Russian, but she's unintelligible. She has an impenetrable accent. So maybe, Hello, you are Dovin. All right, so it sounds like Bob wants to play the prostitute. <laughs> we can do that. All right, yeah, yeah, well, he hasn't talked for a little while. So Bob's going to be the prostitute. And, um, well, it, it, since Tracy's trying to establish... Hey, what's her name? Her name is... Uh, I wrote it down. Irina. Irina. Since, uh, since Tracy's try, trying to establish something pretty specific, Bob will probably have to physically show him that he, she knows how to do this. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Arena, that is a lovely accent you've got there. Why you make fun of I talk? Well, well, I'm not making fun of you. I want to show you something. I have diamonds. <laughs> you have no diamonds. I am a cousin to the prince. So you're, you're a... You pay, yeah? Uh... Da? I am not as rich as he is. The lucky bastard he is. No, you you pay for me. Da? Da? Pay? Babushka? For, for what? Do you need something? There's champagne? There's caviar? I want to show you what's on the roof. <laughs> yeah, Come he with does. Me to the roof. <sighs> Why I go? <laughs> is that a yes? Net. <laughs> well. Stort a vodka bottle of mimsia. Okay, well then. So, should I get you a vodka or something? Da. Da. Okay, I think that's a yes. So I'm, I'll go get her a drink. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> so you do? If you walk away to go to her drink, and she takes yeah. the one that she was holding on, you know, like a glass of cristal or something like that, and she yeah. just drops it. Okay. <laughs> and sort of stands there. Okay. Waiting. I'll get like a big, like a, a pint glass full of vodka. <laughs> a Good. Good Actually, call. two. One for me, one for her. 
And I'll uh, stand near the stairs that go up to the helipad, and I'll, I'll get her attention and try to lure her over to the stairs. Okay. So she comes over, and uh, you know she she sees that, that you've got you know vodka, what she considers a proper drink, and uh, she gestures at it. You you drink. Show me real man. Okay. I'll t- I'll, I'll chug it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So she perks up a little bit at that. Okay. So <laughs> okay. And then I, I give hers and say. You show me you real Russian woman. Yeah, da, whatever the fuck. So she takes, <laughs> she, she takes the bottle. <laughs> go, okay. Go, 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 All go, right. Go. Doesn't finish it, but you know, takes a nice long pull, five or six gulps, and then flings it over her shoulder. Okay. We got the roof. Okay, I'm gonna Hi. give. Ow! I'm gonna find Julius real quick, <laughs> give him a knowing look, and then take her upstairs. He get. He, Oh, so nice. hang on, let me change into Julius. He's 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 got the thousand yard stare going on. You've seen him have this look before. Okay. It's when he's picked someone out to kill. Okay. Do I know who it is? Can I figure out who it is? Uh, you can't tell the direction he's you, you can't tell the direction that he's looking, but you get the feeling that the person might uh is somewhere in the room. Okay. Not That's not good. not far away. And uh, he kind right. of just—he just gives you the nod, like. Okay, yes, I'm gonna shudder with anticipation and then go up the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So why, why upstairs? Why we go? Oh, you want to guess what's up? Guess what's up here? Roof. Oh yeah, but uh, there's something special up here. Television antenna. <laughs> just, just come on up. I'm going up the stairs. She can follow me if she's curious. I will be sure a good time. You're not going to find these at any of the other parties you're going to. Now I'm interested. All right. <laughs> so she follows you upstairs to the roof? Okay. There's a guard up there. I tell him to piss off. <laughs> <laughs> like to actually leave, not just ignore us. Oh, cool. All right. So that's established. All right, so no guard up top, <laughs> and, he, and he gives you the like, oh, God damn it, <laughs> that look. Like he doesn't want to, but he knows, you know, in the scheme of things, you outrank him, and would, he would, he would, even though the the prince wouldn't want you up here alone, he'd get in more trouble for not doing what you told him to do. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, I, I want to point at the helicopter, and it'd be funny if her, if she were to rattle off like the details of the helicopter. <gasps> For me, <laughs> Sikorsky H65, <laughs> twin turbo fan, is beautiful. Oh, oh. Only four rotor. And check this out. I'll open the door. My it's last boyfriend lot. have five rotor. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they all say. Ooh. Okay, so that, that's pretty much the extent of the scene that I want. Okay. It's just yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. So she, she uh, does she glance down and see the keys in the ignition? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay, so she gets a little bit excited about that, and, yes. and, she, and she goes from angry, entitled Russian prostitute to let's have some fun, crazy Russian prostitute. That sounds fun. <laughs> okay. All right, cool. All right, so that's a that's a white one for. Uh, I think that's probably a white one. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Dubon's. Okay. Dubon's. I don't know what he's setting up, but he's setting it up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna give that to Bob. All right, so. Bob. All right, so Julius has got the next scene. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's see. I had an idea earlier about a flashback, but uh, well, tell us. Or- well, what I was thinking is that uh, he was actually on the roof. Mm. When um, Dubin and Brian went up there, do we know who you're here to murder? Uh, I have not established that yet. <laughs> Me? Uh, well, it it may not have been you at first. <laughs> it may be now. But actually, um, no, I'm I'm I have a. You're a serial no. killer, and this Repo Man's after you. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. you know, a serial killer does not shift gears lightly. No. But mm. I'm thinking that some misunderstanding needs to needs to happen here. Mm. So All right. Um uh, You know what? I'm I'm actually coming up blank, so I'll resolve. Okay. All right. 
Um, let's so see. It could be a thing. scene where he makes some sort of move towards his target. Mm hmm. It could be a flashback to him with a prostitute. Could be. Could be. It could um, be a flash forward to him having murdered whoever he had picked. Nice. And, like, trying to cover it up or dump the body in the helicopter or something. Mm. Well, so who do we have around? We have um, Brian or Eric's still around. I'm still around. Um, you know I'm what? The, the uh, prince is around. I, I just had an idea. Um, mm. Julius is a former uh, Olympic athlete. Yeah. And we've got this bust here. Mm -hmm. I feel like Julius probably has to have some feelings towards this bust. Um, oh, that the bust has got, it's part of the sculpture is metal after metal hanging around her neck. Yeah, she wasn't yeah. just the first medalist. She was the first medalist and, you know, swept every event. Yeah, nice. so it's, it's like all these things that he lusts after, like, you know, nestled between two giant rocky bosoms. <laughs> um, and I think that would be an excellent instigation scene with Shar. We haven't heard enough from Shar. Shar theoretically purchased this. Mm -hmm. I think well, what Julius if Julius finds out that it's... Maybe he's poking at it a little too vigorously and discovers it's hollow. And it's full with, you know, something. Sure, sure. That would give him a good reason to talk to Shar yeah, I, I, aside and establish a new relationship. It, it, actually, if, if, if Julius is poking around, I'd come over. There you go. Okay. That sounds good. Good, good. So, so Julius starts poking at the statue. At the oh, yeah, naked so, <laughs> bosom. So statue. he's actually got his hand up and he's sort of stroking the medals. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to, to somebody who doesn't know that he's obsessed with Olympic medals, this looks really, really wrong. <laughs> and, 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 like, we pan over and I'm, like, standing right next to you. Or, like, like just walking up. <laughs> and saying, uh, beautiful medals, are they not? I'm sorry, what? And, he's, and he kind of stops. He's still got his hand on there as he looks over to talk, and then, then he realizes... Said, that, Beautiful medals. Are they not? Yes, they are. Medals have always fascinated me. Indeed. So what this, brings you here tonight? Well... <clears throat> He seems like sort of somewhat taken aback that she doesn't know who he is. <laughs> I also like the idea that you're still like staring directly at the yes. rest. <laughs> he actually doesn't. He never turns to look at her. <laughs> I'm somewhat surprised that you don't know who I am. I was part of the British Olympic contingent in the 1984 Games. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't follow such Western um, amusements. Amusements? This is a very serious thing people from all over the world spend a lifetime preparing for. Some would say it's everything that they are. It's who they become. And isn't that such a sad thing? I mean, you see all these people spending all their time on what is ultimately just a, uh, just a, a passing moment, which you might not even win. So with, with that, he actually breaks his, his, uh, his stare on the, the bust and turns over to look at her and says, you know, in many ways I couldn't agree with you more. By I'm so glad to hear that. Having things like this taken away from you, it helps you discover what you're really meant for. That and, uh, is so, so true. I like you. So this is this is actually this actually takes place a little bit um a little bit before the previous scene. Okay. And so now so the stare that he's got going on is actually at her. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You'd be surprised what a tragic event can help you realize about your own life. Oh, I completely agree. I'm all about tragic tragedy. events. <laughs> Some think it's sad. I find it illuminating. Oh, it will be. It, it can be illuminating. Yes. Would you care to have a drink with me later? I do I have some other conversations. Right I need. Oh well. I have other things that do need to be attended to first, but I really <laughs> would like to get to know you better. Oh, it's sure to be like, and not too much later. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like the idea, just sort of breaking character for a moment, that, that, that like she's identified that this may be like a kindred soul, and she wants to save him now. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, of course she does. Yeah. All right. All right. I think, so I think I, we should call so maybe, that. So maybe she says, "Yes, indeed. In fact, perhaps we can uh, go somewhere later. I, I'd like to to uh, uh, take you home. Of course, I'm not uh, you know suggesting anything. Um, but I would love to you know spend some time in a in a nice, very normal, non-sexual way." <laughs> I can imagine Julius bringing up the shot putting just randomly here. <laughs> I can be 100% honest with you that my interest in you is absolutely unsexual. I'm so glad to hear that. You wouldn't believe what I go through. I can imagine. But he, he's not talking about imagining what she has gone through. He's imagining what she's going to go through. <laughs> so so uh, I, I get to resolve this. So I'm resolving this as a bad ending for him because... Oh yeah, because he's been diverted. We know, we, well, we know that she wants to save him, but he wants to kill her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If he yeah. succeeds, he's going to die. <laughs> he also came very close to the discovering, like what is going on in that statue, and didn't. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, yeah, that's that true. Close. Yeah, so that's right. black. That's a black guy. Yeah, and I'm giving it to. Uh, I'm giving it to Dubin here. Mm. All right. Great. Yeah, he needs some dice. He needs some dice. All right. So yeah, so they they resolve to meet up later on in the evening. Mm-hmm. But not in too long. <laughs> okay. So it's my turn. Right. Uh, I think I will establish this time. And. Uh, I want to have a scene with Shar, okay. where I go up to Shar, and because um, this is all uh, about us earning credit, well, at least me, I want to earn yeah. credit. So um, I'm 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 making sure that while she's been making the rounds, she's been talking to everybody about me and how awesome I am. Mm. Because because I need everybody after this party to know my name so when it eventually comes out that that I may have been involved because of course I don't want to get arrested right. um, that like that means something mm-hmm. so I, I imagine we're, we're essentially trying to establish cred in kind of the underground you know um, anti-capitalist movement yeah I would love for there to be this big rumor that like I am actively acting against uh, the the disgustingly rich mm-hmm. instead of just talking. Yeah. Because then more people would listen to me talk. <laughs> <laughs> right? If it was if it was hinted at that mm-hmm. I was this like radical that actually acted on my words, that would be great and it would it would make things a lot easier on me. That's for sure. So here's the question though. If if I know that you've now been making the rounds with my cousin mm-hmm. and you're doing things, I'm wondering if I'm now getting cold feet about your involvement. Well, sure, that may be the scene. Yeah. All right. So I'm, I'm going to sort of try to suss out from you how reliable you are, because I may be wanting to change my plans. Okay. Mm-hmm. What okay. nationality are you again? Say what? What nationality is uh, um, Eric? Eric is an Irishman living in London. Okay, but, so are you trying uh, to get the attention of the IRA? What? Are you trying to get the attention of the IRA? Uh, not the IRA specifically, uh, but I, I would like to become sort of sort of internet famous, as it were. You know what I mean? <laughs> I would I want people to like to like like I want to be legendary in my own right. Never mind the IRA. It'll be like the IRA and Eric. Mm. All right. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. So um, all right. So I come. You know, I'm I'm free. I was mingling in the party, and then I I get I see Shar again, and mm-hmm. she's just walked away from J- Juliet, Julius, and uh, I come how running up to her. And I was but like, if I oh. see you, and I I come over to you, because you I don't necessarily to want to leave him, but I'm like, you know, oh hmm, yeah, I've so seen so you wandering that, around this party. I'm the thing that pulls it away and gives Julius the opportunity to separate himself. Yes. Okay. All right. Fine. That's great. What? Oh, one thing to interject. Mm. As he sees who you're walking over towards, you see this really fucked up smile come over his face. <laughs> <laughs> He's even more sure about killing you now. 
<laughs> okay. So I go, oh, have you, so what have you been saying? Do the, do the people know who I am? Are you telling them who I am? Are you like, oh, yeah, it's great. You know, he got this great statue, and, uh, you know, he was really secretive about it. So I hope it's not filled with explosives. I thought we covered this before. We are not here to make ourselves... We, we are here to make a statement. We are here yes. to... Yes. To... Do... To do. Yes. Eric and Shah, legendary doers. No, 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 not, not, not that. We're here to just come over here. Okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> We're here to blow this place up. We're not here to 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 make anyone famous. Well, what do you have? No, we're. We're blowing it up. I mean, that's like literally, like there's there's a saying, you know, to blow up there. And then you become famous. Like it's all, it's all metaphor. You know, we're going to blow up. We're not going to die because we're going to leave. We're going to blow this place up and then we're going to blow up. Cha! Cha na na na! So is Char getting yeah, cold, yeah. cold feet on this because of his motivations? I'm getting cold feet on him. Um, okay. Okay. So, okay. So here we go. Um, so remind me again of the triggering device. Oh, the. Tr well, here's the thing about the triggering device. Uh, I, I have a question. Where are you in the party? Like at the party? Because I'm assuming be like he, someone he, over. He pulled over. Well, I pulled him over into a <laughs> relatively quiet corner, the balcony, maybe. Okay. balcony. Okay. Wait, so someone on the roof may be able to hear from the balcony? Quite possibly. <laughs> That's quite possible. It's quite possible. All right, continue. All right. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing about the triggering device. I had it hidden in a, a diamond ring, but my friend Seamus was holding it for me at the pawn shop, and recently... Somebody came in, and he was... You and your to... Irish. Where is the, 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 the ring? Okay, there's a guy here who owes me money who bought it. <laughs> and Ooh. I know that he doesn't have the money. So I'm going to meet with him in like 45 minutes, and I'm going to be like, all right, I know you just bought a bunch of jewelry. You're a crazy as a fuck, so you must have it on you. And... And then he's going to give it to me, and, you know, we're going to go down the window washing device. It's all pulleys. It'll be fast. And blow it up. You are going to get this ring from this man in the oh, next yeah. ten minutes. Oh, worst case scenario. Don't worry. In the Love next it. ten minutes. No, 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 no. Forty-five minutes. It's it's got to be, there's a plan. He's very quiet. He doesn't like to be rushed. It, 45 minutes, I promise. And worst case scenario, worst, worst case scenario, we light everything on fire and it blows up anyway. No, no, no. I will not jeopardize this. You will get this ring for me immediately or it's off. And I, I walk open up oh, my wait. jacket and like one side of my jacket is just like five boxes of matches. Like those really long... <laughs> Matches that you'd like to grow with. Well, I think it'd be hilarious. Plan. I think it'd be hilarious if I overheard that last part about yes. finding the ring soon. Yeah. And I think that you guys are are about to be engaged or something like that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And that you were going to announce it at this party. But don't worry, I'll find the ring, and then everyone will know our names. <laughs> so you better. So here's the question on uh, the resolution here. I'm, I'm a yeah. little bit torn here. What I need to know for good or bad is, what uh -huh. is Sh how does Char feel about this? So based on his description of Julius, has Char figured out that Julius is who, who he's talking about? No. Okay, so she doesn't know. Okay. No, she does not. So that doesn't automatically mean bad ending for Brian. No. Uh, nope. Likely, but not definitely. <laughs> yeah, it means it's probably bad for Brian. You think it's bad for me? Yeah. I think I've got this down. I think, well, he's, he's getting... Well, he's get, 
I don't well, think you have it down. You just think you do. So, well, so here's the thing. So, um, he wants the he wants the full 45 minutes because he needs his he needs his plan to come to fruition here. Mm-hmm. And she's pressuring him for less time. That's mm-hmm. true. That's true. So, say so he's not going to get the time that he wants. He's got to rush this. With the serial killer. So we'll call that a bad end. <laughs> yeah. That's a and, good point. That's a good and, point. And who gets the die? All right, so that's a black die. Um, I'm going to give it to Duban for mm-hmm. inserting himself in the scene there in uh, okay. such a nice way. Right. Yeah. yeah. Two black dice. All righty. So we are at the... Uh, the we're at the, the intermission so, here. No, no, no. Uh, Brent's le- end of turn. No, right? Brent went first. Oh, Brent went yep. first. Yeah, we've, right. got, we've got eight dice out. He started. That's right. That's right. Yeah. All right. So, so have people done this before? Yeah, so what everybody needs to do is um, you need to roll the dice that you've got in front of you. And okay. you'll, to- you'll total up each color. So you'll total up your whites, total up your blacks. And you subtract the lower number from the higher number. Wait, we do that at intermission? Yep. Which is right now. No, I thought that's what we did at the end. I'm sorry. Yep. No, no you, that, you, we'll do that. You do it at the end, end also. Oh, the okay, we're good. Yeah, yeah I'm so. right. Um, Here we go. We go find some dice. Seven black. What kind of game does have dice gonna, within I'm reach? Grab dice for that. One second. All right, so I'm I've got two whites, so that's the and I'm so I'm subtracting the black from the white, right? You have two whites and one black, correct? Yeah. So get a white total from the two whites and a black total from the one black. Oh, and that's when we minus, yep. And then you subtract the lower from the higher. Yep, that's right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right, yeah, so I got a total of one. What color? Um, one, uh, one white. Brian, what's your? I've got a total of two... And my color is white. All right. Now we need Brent. So uh, it's white. I, I, so I have seven blacks. So I have the lowest. Bl- I have the highest black total. So I'll be doing one part of the. Yeah. So let's see here. You have only one white die, Brent. Yeah, I have all the one. You're okay. The one. All right. All right. So uh, so Brian and Tracy. Yep. All right. So what we do is we take the remaining eight dice in the middle. You're going to go ahead and roll those, and those give us the numbers we have to use to build the tilt, for Brian and Tracy to build the tilt. Okay. Should I go ahead and roll that? Or I'll do it. Yeah, and it's, it. it's just so we're clear, it, uh, it's Brian and Tracy because I have the highest white and he's got the highest black. Yes. Right. Yep. For those playing along at home. Yep. Mm-hmm. Forgot the educational aspect. Right. <laughs> All right, we got a one, two, three, four, two fives, and two sixes. I'll add it to the sheet real quick. Okay. Yeah. Uh, All right, so, right uh, so... Do you have the tilt sheet? Which It's linked at the top of the fiasco doc. I'll bring it up right now. It's, a, it's the, last, the tilt in aftermath PDF. Yep. And so you're picking category, and I'm picking category. Okay. Yep. So we'll do that. And then I'll pick the element for your category, and you'll pick the element for my category. Yeah, that's the way I've always, I've always done it. I like that. Well, that's, that's the rule. Oh, um, is it? No. Yep. And well, that's that's using, fortunate for me, then. Yeah. So we, and then we are using the, the dice I just rolled. So one, two, three, four, two fives, and two sixes. So let's pick. Uh, hold on. It's not coming up for me. Hold on one second. Let's try okay. it again. I it just got redirecting, and it never redirected. It'll redirect to a PDF download, which may show up differently depending on your browser. Yeah. I already I've opened I opened the other stuff. I don't know why this isn't working. Or I can just tell you the the six categories if you want. Yeah, I guess that works too, right? Alright. Uh mayhem, tragedy, innocence, guilt, paranoia, failure. Um Okay. I like uh, paranoia. Okay, paranoia is a five. I'm going to yeah. choose innocence, which is a three. Okay, so we're going to get rid of. I'll et, delete my five here. Alright. Uh oh. Lost mine. You deleted it, alright. <laughs> okay. 
Um, so under innocence, or no, uh, so you, all right, so you pick paranoia. Or let me tell you the innocence options, Brian, that you'll be choosing from. Uh, is Brian still there? Oh, yeah. He, he will be in a second. Yep. Oh, I, as soon as the PDF loaded, uh, I got dropped. Oh. <laughs> Just, yeah, that nice. All right, here we go. Putting that stuff back on. Little docs. Can anybody add blocks to the uh, to the presentation? I'm getting a just a timeout on my end. I can't add anything. Oh, you put the dice there. I put the dice on the uh, the docs. Yeah. No, I was just going to delete these out. What I was going to do was add a little box for each of the uh, tilt elements as a reminder. Yep. You guys see a little box from me, little right? No. Guess not. Well, I have it on the at the end of the dock. There's a tilt section, which I have the three innocents and the five paranoia. Okay. So I'm picking an element out of paranoia, and you're picking an element out of innocence. I, I see the hi, this is Brent box that you had up there, Brent. Okay. Um, all right. And everything available is except the three currently. Everything but the three, and I yeah. need something from innocence. You got it, Vern. All right. Okay, uh, I'm going to pick five. Love rears its ugly head. Okay. I kind of like uh, the thing you stole has been stolen. But I don't think we've established anything being stolen yet. Um, no, so far that we have not stolen anything. Um, At least we haven't said that we've stolen anything. Yeah. Perhaps I did not pay for the giant bust. <laughs> it would be hard to steal it, though. Um, oh, you stole the diamond ring. Well, Duban, you stole the keys to the helicopter. Yeah. yeah, true. And those could they were in the ignition. Yeah. But they don't Plus need to happen. be anymore. So I will go through the paranoia options. You guys can help me. All right. Okay. So one is a stranger arrives to settle a score. Two is what seems like dumb luck isn't. Things are afoot. We can't choose three. Option four is a sudden reversal of status, a fortune of sympathy. Five is the thing you stole has been stolen. And six is somebody is watching, waiting for their moment. Now six would fit with Julius pretty well. Well six feels like it's gonna happen anyway. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Um, hmm. I, I think I'll go with a sudden reversal. Okay. Hmm. Sudden reversal. What status of fortune of sympathy? Status fortune. Hmm. Oh, hell. What's up? What if I'm falling in love with Julius? <laughs> <laughs> well, that uh, was did cross my mind. Yeah. Because, hmm. I mean, the other option is, like, I'm falling in love with you, which... Which, that would be because that's the really lie, horrible right? for everyone involved. That's the lie. I mean, the only other people who could fall in love would be Dubon and the Russian prostitute. Mm. <laughs> that that could be kind of a crazy Thelma and Louise type ending to it. Though. Could be all of these people, you know. Like, so it's a helicopter. It's, 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 kind of theme. it's also it's not a one-time use item. It's a general theme. That's right. True. That's right. Hmm. Okay. All right. Okay. So we are back. So we have two tilt elements: love rears his ugly head, and sudden reversal of status, fortune, sympathy, etc. Mm -hmm. And it is Brent's turn. All right. Um, I'm gonna let you guys hit me up. Okay. All right. Okay. 
So if this is Act 2. In Act 2, any of the dice you receive, you keep. So you're going to end up with two dice, two additional dice. Okay. For your two additional scenes. Okay. That's the last act. Uh, so Char wants to be set up with something. Okay, I think Duban needs to approach Char about her engagement. I think, I think that sounds good, <laughs> but yeah. I think we should get the prince involved as well. Okay, and yes. Sal. Yeah. All right. I like the idea that they've been trying to set me up for some time. Okay. And so the idea that, they've, that I've kind of spurned their matches, but now apparently I found a guy, is kind well, of a, a problem. Well, du Dubon overheard this stuff about talk of Ring being found shortly. Yeah. It has to be done very soon. You know, I'm thinking, oh, the party's going to end soon, therefore. And this would also ruin the party to some extent, right? Because... <laughs> So he's, he's all about promoting that. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, oh, I need to tell the prince, yeah. and let's meet them at the balcony. Not only were we planning to announce our engagement, but I apparently have lost the ring, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, that's, and that's another reason to bring the prince in, because he's yeah. probably got you know, jewelry galore. If you Absolutely. It. So where do we want to do this? Do we want to do this on the balcony? I can imagine like Eric running off, and then Char's mm -hmm. leaving the balcony when the prince and Dubon show up. Yep. I, I love that, yes. And maybe, like, one of the prince's, like, people, like, one of the people who can help him, like, one of his... In, in fact, I like the idea that, like, you've already approached the prince and yeah. sort of told him what you think you know. Yeah. So, like, they're approaching on force. Well, I can imagine, like, he's already worked it out. Like, he has one of his assistants go get him a ring, and they show up with a ring. Nice. So that okay. All right. This so, can happen uh, even if Eric, who is apparently a bumbling idiot who <laughs> lost a ring, can still make this happen if you... If if it's happening. Bob, do you want to uh, play the prince in the scene and I'll be your assistant? Yes, I would love to play the prince. <laughs> okay. thought you might. So I'm out on the balcony cooling off. I'm just sort of looking out over London. The fireworks going off. I'm, I've got a glass of champagne. I'm just kind of trying to relax. Okay. And then I'm going to show up uh, with a champagne glass and I'm going to excitedly congratulate you. Like, oh my gosh, I'm so happy for you! And I'll run up and give you a big hug. Right. And just as just as the, the the hug is is terminated and the embrace you know separates a little bit, onto the balcony comes strolling the prince. He's got you know his fifty thousand dollar suit on, but you know no tie, collar spread wide open, showing the <laughs> bling down here. He's got you know a bottle of Dom Perignon fifty three in his hand, a couple of glasses, uh, you know. Uh, you can see a little bit of white powder by his nose. His <laughs> eyes are all bloodshot, <laughs> and uh, he, he's got a, his uh, he's got his assistant with him, uh, Amir. Mm-hmm. I am Amir. He says, Hello, cousin. I hear there's big news afoot today. Indeed. And I can't believe, and I can't believe you picked the prince's party to do it. <laughs> yes, I can't believe you picked my party either. <laughs> I was all set to have a smashing good time, but you pick tonight to make it the Shahar show. This is my party, but let it never be said that I cannot be magnanimous. Amir. And I come forward, and I have a small box. Okay. I and believe. I, think, I, we over, I overheard. I, I'm sorry, I, I was on the roof. I overheard you had a problem about the ring. But... Uh, family is family, and uh, I think we've come up with a solution for you. Yes, your cousin is correct. I've gone ahead and taken care of your boyfriend Eric's problem for him. Amir? And I open and it up, and of course, there is a lovely ring with a huge diamond on it, which could probably conceal any number of things. True. Yes. That's an interesting question. Do I think this is the ring? So this is this is the your decision point. Good ending, bad ending. Bad <laughs> ending means she thinks that this is the trigger device. <laughs> right. Um. Hmm. But there's no reason for her not to think that this is the trigger device. I think she thinks that they've, you know, they've somehow figured it out. It actually, how about this? She is like going. We could even do like a little flashback to wonder where, you know, she she thinks she basically they figured it out. They're ratting her out, and they're just sort of hoisting her by her own, her own petard. Oh, yes. So they're just saying, oh, well, you want to blow us up? Sure, go right ahead. Here you go. <laughs> oh, yeah, when the, so when the, when the 
the prince presents it to her. He gives gives it to her with the whole "We've solved your boyfriend's problem right. for him." I believe right. this is what he was looking for. Exactly. And he's got yeah. kind of that, but he's he's pissed about the whole "You're throwing all the suitors he set up for you in his face." He doesn't you know, he doesn't know shit about it. <laughs> and yeah. ruining his Olympic party with this. Right. Buddy, you know? <laughs> the Olympic party. Got Julius Edwards to show up. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> this, is, this is about as black as it can get. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Great. Definitely. All right. All right. So Shar gets a black die. But you get Definitely. to keep it too. Isn't that lovely? <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. All right. So uh, Tracy. All right. I want to establish a scene. Okay. Uh, I want to have abandoned the prostitute up <laughs> upstairs with the. With the helipad. Uh-huh. I'm going to be badgering Julius mm. because I'm curious to know who's the victim and if I can watch. All right. And <laughs> where where are we having this conversation? Uh, we're having the we're we're having this conversation out like in a in the like in the middle of the party, like surrounded okay. by people. And we're it's sort of a you know we're not speaking in direct terms we're, we're being okay yeah, beating around. beating around the bush okay okay yeah, exactly exactly I like the idea that you're still near the statue sure oh yeah he he's hardly moved from it right in fact when when Dubon comes over uh, Julius is still staring at the medals <laughs> actually I'm gonna have a gift for you oh <laughs> all right because I invited well, you to this party and I'm a fan of yours all right make me make your approach okay. I'm going to have a box with a golden shot putt in it. <laughs> <laughs> that I'm going to give you. And then, I, and, then, and then, after, you know, hopefully pleasing you with it, uh, ask you about who the victim is. So I'm, okay. All right, so, they, so yeah, he, he walks up. Julius is staring into nothing, but he's looking right at the gold medals. Right. I'm going to sneak up... I'm gonna sneak up. I'm not gonna sneak up. I'm gonna say, uh, Julius, I have something for you, and I'll hand you this like mahogany case. So yeah, you, you hold it out, and he he doesn't break his stare at the at the statue. He merely just says, "Where is Arena?" <laughs> Arena, upstairs. She's I fine. thought I told you to take care of her. She is taken care of. Are she you just, sure? Like, she just drank half a bottle of vodka, and was chugging the rest when I left. So I think she's okay. <sighs> but, but I have bad. something for you. What do you have for me? It, it, it better be a really good reason that you left Arena upstairs. It's a gift. <laughs> you don't understand her importance. Open the goddamn box, Julius. And he just turns and gives you the fucking death stare. He looks <laughs> down, opens it up. He looks back at you. Is, Aren't this, you your way of, is this your way of asking me for something? Oh, of course not. This is just a gift between don't friends. Be sh- don't be shy. We both know what the other is. There's no reason to <laughs> play pretend. <laughs> what are you asking me for? I want to know who your special interest is. Oh, of course you do. <laughs> I don't know if you're ready to know yet. Ooh, wait, However, you yes, you may. You may have a hint. In fact, I'm going to tell you where it's going to happen, and I want you Ooh. to watch. Ooh. You know what I like, Julius. <laughs> That's creepy. Um, it should be creepy. All right, so, so here's You're the... You're a serial killer, and I'm an admirer. All right, all right so, he, so here's the question, all right, for, for the, the since he established the group's going to give him good-bad. So good-bad is going to be, the I think, the determination whether or not I tell him it's his cousin. Um. So he wants to know... So he's already getting part part of what he wants. So he's getting he's getting to come. Yeah. But is he going to get to find out ahead of time? I don't think I want uh, Dubon to get a white die. I got to tell you. Yeah. Okay. So I think we want to stack. Yeah. I'm okay. So yeah, I'm not going to tell him who it is. Well, well, well Brent's got something to say here. Okay. I was going to say I think it is it is far worse for Dubon to find out at the moment. Yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah. You know, when it's That's pretty much true. too late to do anything about it. Yes. Okay, so That's so good. Dubon gets to come, but he doesn't get to know ahead of time. All right. So where is it happening? Billiard room, second floor of the penthouse. Okay. In, in about fifteen minutes. Okay. I want you to go there now. I want you to wait behind the curtain on the balcony. You'll hear a short conversation. Things will get very, very quiet. 
then you may come out. All right. Okay. Thank you. Beautiful. And in All fact, right. he's... I'm going to shake your hand. <laughs> he's, he's stopped staring at the statue, and he's now staring at the golden shot put. All right. <laughs> I think, Sounds good. And, and as we fade out, you hear him mumbling something to himself about setting a new world record tonight. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Bob, you are scarily good at this. <laughs> That's a creepy murderer, serial killer. I, I watch a lot of Dexter. What can I say? Hey, yeah. yeah. And, and I, tor- I, you know, I, I torture small animals in my free time. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Uh, all right, so Julius is up next. All right, so this is Ju- so Julius. Is, this is first scene. Okay, mm-hmm. so. I'm trying to decide how much I want to accelerate it. All right, you know what? No, I, I want that. We only have, yeah. We only got so, six more scenes. Yeah, let's, let's let's crank it. Let's crank this up. Okay. So yeah, there's another thing to think about. There's only four white dice and two black dice left. Yep. So we need to okay. start having happy scenes. Yep. Although the very very last die could be any color. You can have a yep. black and a bad mm. scene. With a black die. Well, happy's relative depending on who's asking for it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. What Julius wants is not happy. Thanks. Um, all right. So so here's the scene. Uh, uh, Dubin is on the balcony. Or you know, near the balcony, hiding behind the uh, the curtains of the billiard room, mm-hmm. in walks Julius uh, and Shar, mm-hmm. uh, having a conversation about the meaning of life and and whatnot, and uh, and and that's that's where we begin. Okay. Right. Um, I think I have the uh, um, the ring on my finger. Yes. Mm-hmm. On your finger? <laughs> yes, I, I I've got there. it right here, so I can look at it. And I'm, I'm like, you know, doing this with it the whole time. Okay. Have you had the announcement yet in the 15-minute interlude, or mm. is it just you're just wearing it? I think I'd like to establish that um, basically I took the ring and we decided not to announce anything just yet. Okay. Oh, okay. All right, and uh, you know, Ju- so Julius, uh, you know, being the sociopath that he is, notices lots of mundane things. So as as the as he closes the door behind them, you know, he does that creepy pause after he closes both doors, <laughs> like you know, where he's just making sure they're really shut. <laughs> and uh, I imagine like shake the doors, shake the yeah, doors again, shake them a third time. <laughs> so he, so and you know, without looking at our hands and just sort of as he's turning, he says, "That's a beautiful ring." Why, thank you. That is very nice. Oh, yeah, here's a question, actually, before we go any further. Um, where is the actual ring? The actual ring is on Arena's finger upstairs in the helicopter. Upstairs in the helicopter. Make sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, so th- there's no chance for that to come out in this. Okay, cool. Um, it is so wonderful to meet someone who has similar interests. I wouldn't say similar interests, but I do feel that we have a connection of sorts inside. You keep very interesting company, Shar. Why, thank you, yes. I like to keep people around who are useful. And so as he, as he s- says this, he sort of makes a definitive step that if she, unless she's completely ignorant and drunk, she's going to notice that he's intentionally standing between her and the door. Okay. It says, Mr. O'Grady is a rather unsavory character. He kind of just got, like, real serious on her. Mm-hmm. That's very um, polite of you for, to be interested in my, uh, my concerns and my safety, but I can assure you that I have him handled. <laughs> or wrapped around your finger. <laughs> <laughs> that may be the case, but my interest in your personal safety runs deeper than Mr. O'Grady. How polite. Do we know each other from somewhere? No. But let's just say... We're about to get very close. (laughs) You're about to get to know a side of me that I've not shared with many people. I'd like to show you something. Oh, dear. Not that sort of something. Oh, good. (laughs) So he pulls out the the mahogany mahogany box. Okay. and, uh, And sort of... So the, the positioning in the room, here's how it's laid out. So, mm. um, you know, the, he's, he puts it on the billiard table such that her back is turned to the balcony. Yes. So that she cannot see uh, Dubon when he eventually comes out. And so, mm-hmm. and he's, so, you know, he's positioned between her and the door. Her back is to the balcony. And he places the box on the table. And just to make sure, because he's, 
he thinks Dubon might have it in him, but he's also concerned Dubon might not be, you know, entirely uh, reliable. He mm -hmm. actually states, I'd like us to stop for a moment of silence here while I show you what's in this box. And he very slowly How exciting. Lifts, lifts the box open, and in it she sees the large golden shot put. Okay. And he, he um, pulls it out. She has no idea what it is. Yeah. <laughs> And th th this is even, this is even more disappointing to him. It makes him is that want from her. It makes him <laughs> want her to die so much. She doesn't even know what a shot put is. He says, "No, this is this is something that's been very close to me my entire life. This is called a shot." Oh, how interesting! It, how does it work? <laughs> I have someone here who would like to also see how this works. Oh. Okay, and so that's his key. Does he step out at this point? Sure. Well, the question is how – am I pissed? I'm probably pissed in this shot. Well, that's what, what I'm wondering. So, so there's a couple things up in the air. So, mm -hmm. you know – I think I should just push you off the balcony. <laughs> do, does he – yeah, okay, all right, yeah. So we'll come on in here. Let's, let's right. see what happens. Remember, I'm I, like, I, I set it up so I don't get to pick how this ends. Yeah, I'm going to say <laughs> – I'm going to step out and say so, – So as you're doing I'm that – I'm going to say no. I'm telling you no. I've I've pulled the shot back like I'm going to show her how it works, and I've got myself angled right towards her face. Such a heroic pose. It's, yes, it is. And that's what he steps out and says no. I'm going to say no and then push you off the balcony. <laughs> oh, and that, that's why you get a black die is because you get pushed off the balcony. Yeah. All right, exactly. let's, let's cut it right there. It's him like yeah. run, running across the room. No! Mm -hmm. Grabs him, runs him over. And he flips head over heels over the balcony. So we don't see if he grabs it, catches it, anything like that. Okay. But we, what we do have is the golden shot put hitting the ground and rolling across the floor. That's mm -hmm. fantastic uh, because it's my turn now. And <laughs> I would like to establish the next scene. Excellent. So I'm downstairs. I've you know, been enjoying myself while waiting. Sorry, uh, that's the role reversal right there. Yeah, yeah that's the yes. role reversal. And... Um, Wait, so Bob gets a black die, right? The scene yeah, number? Oh, yeah, yeah, he got okay. it. He got it. Okay, good. So, um, and I'm, you know, getting anxious. Because one, I've been drinking a lot. And two, like I had this all figured out, but Shah doesn't seem to think like I have it all figured out, which doesn't make any sense, because I do obviously have it all figured out. And then, of course, I see Shah walk away with Julius mm -hmm. right, into the upstairs, where the party's not even going on. So and I... He and he's the guy you're trying to get to. Yeah. I'm just taking him away. So I get the br this brilliant idea, right, that I'm going to listen to Shaw and get this done in 10 minutes instead of 45 in front of her to impress her. So I take the carving knife off the turkey station, and I slide that into my hand, and I come up these stairs, and um, I step into the room. Like, right as the shot put hits the floor, okay. and I see the curtains to the balcony, these big, heavy curtains flutter, but of course I can't see past them. Mm -hmm. And all I see is Shar standing there, and I've got this big turkey carving knife in my hand. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. Okay. And so... Wait, if I'm still there, right? So... Well, no, I think you probably went on... To, if you were going to push him off the balcony, you're probably past those two curtains onto the balcony. Oh, okay. So you can't so see me? You're... There, but I don't know you're there. Okay. Char yeah. does. All right. And Julius may or may not be there. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> yeah. You know. Um. And so now I'm concerned, and I drop oh, a whisper. I said, Where did he go? So I'm, I'm going to spin around to you. Yeah. Eric, what are you doing here? I'm here for the ring. What? I'm, gonna step out from, I'm stepping out from behind the curtain. Like, we already dealt with that. <laughs> what? Where is Julius? I need the ring. You told me to get the ring, so I get the turkey knife. Julius what? had to leave. What? 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 <laughs> <laughs> Wait, who said Julius had to leave? Did Brett say that? <laughs> Dubin says it. Oh, so Dubin is entering. Dubin steps out from behind the curtain. Yeah. He says, we, already, we heard about your ring problem, and the prince and I already took care of it. And we're going to have a point to Char's hand. And for the, for the record, uh, Eric thinks that Julius has the ring. 
He doesn't know yeah. that Arena has it. He thinks that of Julius course. has it, and Julius yeah. just went over the railing. Oh, right. and, I'm so, like, and Julius had to leave suddenly. <laughs> and so I look over, and I grab Shaw's hand, and I'm looking at it. And I go, this isn't the ring. This is not the ring. That's because you lost the ring, dumbass. No, we got you another one. <laughs> Julius had the ring. We need Julius's ring. Now we're going to have to light this place on fire. And I pull out a matchbox, <laughs> and I start trying to light a match, like really frantically <laughs> over the whole table. I'm gonna like knock the matches out of your hand and just you idiot! Shar, what? what's the Shar? What the hell is wrong with him? How could you mistake that ring for this ring? I'm not the idiot. And I drop my the current matchbox and I pull another box out and I start trying to light a match again. <laughs> what's with the turkey knife, Eric? Ooh, that's I a good question. I needed a turkey knife so I could threaten Julius so I could get the ring. Hmm. Duh. Why did Duh. Julius take your ring? Julius bought the ring from Seamus, who I gave it to hold, but Seamus is a dumbass. What does that matter now? The prince got you a much better ring. You can't blow up a big giant pair of stone boobies. Okay. I'm going to do the stupidest thing in my life. I'm okay. going to run out to the balcony and see if Julius is still there. Okay. Okay. Wait, I don't know about this bomb, so now I'm. No, you don't. Gonna... Yeah. So, <laughs> no, you so don't. what I was gonna, what I was gonna suggest here, we got, we got decision point here. Yeah. Is is good bad? Is that relative to Dubin finding out about the bomb? Mm. Yeah, that's a good decision point, right? Because it's all gonna cascade from this scene anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So um, if he... I think he should. Okay, so that'd be bad for Brian. That'd be Probably bad for very Eric. Very much. Okay. Okay, so let's keep playing it out here. So, uh, can I can I make a suggestion that it just popped into my head? Sure. Go. Um, I think it's pretty clear from the way things have casually played out that Dubin successfully pushed Julius off the balcony. However, yeah, I think so too. I did establish window washer gear. Yep. <laughs> I'm just throwing that out there. Okay. Well, we can so, deal with that when it comes yeah. to Julius' scene. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But so, for just for the moment, we I just so we know, Shaw got to the balcony, Julius wasn't there. Yes. Yeah, yeah. okay. All right. So it, it's still that's still up in the air. Um, and I'm sorry, where was it? So, so Yashemus is an idiot. Yep, and I'm trying to let the match. Actually, I like the idea that, like, I'm going to run out to the balcony and say... You're telling me that the the ring that is the trigger for the bomb was on that guy? Yes. Julius. So I'm going to run out, and of course, Dubin heard that. Yeah. Julius. Oh, I'm not even processing. Yeah. Julius owed me money, and he took his money, apparently, and put it into rings, which apparently bought my ring. Seamus thought it was a good idea. He's a dumbass. <laughs> I'm wondering what the hell Dubin's going to do. Yeah. Well, Dubin scene is coming up shortly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, right. so I, I think that's probably we've established the outcome. Yep. You know, I, I, I'd like to end the scene on a high note, mm. if, if, if with permission, since we're running out of time here. Sure. And say that I finally do let the light the billiard table on fire. Okay. Nice. Classy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and now it is, um, uh, yeah. Shower's turn. Yep. Okay. Um, I love the idea that, um, so I think I'm, I'm just going to establish it this way. Um, so I run out to the balcony, um, I, I look over, there's no one there, there's the, the shot, you know, on the balcony, um, and we get the classic sort of horror movie, quiet beat, and then Julius, you know, vaults up, or <laughs> otherwise, you know, appears on the other side of the balcony, because he's climbed back up from wherever that is. Or, or even better, she does the classic thing. She, you know, she leans down. Yeah. And it's looking, and he like grabs her leg or something and pulls her off. Her arm, I guess. And she's sticking out leg first, which seems kind of odd. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, she, she's she's gone over. She, she's well. Well, yeah, yeah. She's like put her 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 foot over to sort of look down, and he grabs the leg and pulls her down to like the scaffolding. Well, if and he has the rope, if if there's uh, you know window washing equipment, there might be rope. He could just make a lasso and just 
toss it up just as he looks yeah, over. Yeah, I'm thinking, what if he pulls her down to the uh, to the window washing equipment? Yeah, yeah, it's, yep. It was just below the balcony, so he reaches up, he grabs her, he yanks her over. Yep. Mm-hmm. They all start falling, and they boom, you know, hit side by side next to each other on the balcony. I mean, on yep. the on the window washing yep. equipment. And yep. of course, yep. we see one of the ropes fray. Yeah. Well, yes. she hits, and everything's just <laughs> swinging precariously. You. Yes. Are we going to get murdered now? <laughs> I think it's time. It's time for you to be punished. He's got, you know, like one hand on her throat. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I like you so much anymore. That's unfortunate. I rather have come to like you quite a bit. So you've given me something else to focus on besides that dirtbag, O'Grady. Your <laughs> ignorance, your your complete lack of civility, your an appreciation for one of the most pure human things. I'm going to give you a new appreciation for the other most pure human thing. And he begins to like, you know, like throttle her. Mm-hmm. Oh, I got good, perfect. Here. So you're, you're getting a good ending, right? Please go. So right. There's all white dice left. Right. So what was rolling on the balcony when we last left? The shot put. Yes, very heavy shot put, which just fell uh. off the balcony. Right down, clocks him on the head and knocks him out. <laughs> oh, good. That's fun. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, so that is a so that's white a white die for shot. Car. Okay, and I'm gonna I'm gonna frisk you and find that you don't have the ring on you. Yes, there's no ring. Yeah. Of course not. Okay. <laughs> All right. Eric! So uh, now it's Juban's turn. Yeah. I'm wondering. Yeah. Uh, have fun with that, Juban. Yeah. <laughs> like. I could I could try to get everyone to leave. I could try I could tell the prince that the statue is a bomb. I could just try to push the bomb off the balcony, which I think. Well, you don't know what the bomb is. No, no, no I said could. it was in the big stone boobies. Yeah, you said big stone oh, you, boobies. You did. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And, which is right in front of the pool, and right now in the room we're the only few people there, right. and the flaming pool right. table. Yeah. Well, see, I don't really want the prince to die, nor do I want to die myself. True. So, well, maybe the scene starts with the fire alarm going off. Because they've only lit the billiard table on fire. Yeah. Right? That would cause at least some people to leave. Or it, I, could just also, to, I could get the helicopter and try to get the statue out of there. <laughs> you can, that's a 10-foot tall statue. You gotta get it onto the balcony first, and I got, my, and fuck I got it all up. the finest Russian prostitutes around. That's true. Well, that's true. A helicopter lowered it in, so I'm sure we could get it out. No, you know, you could. It would just take some noticeable doing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna talk to the prince. Okay. I'm gonna go tell the prince. And so anyone else want to be in that scene? All right, Bob's coming back. So Shar's on the balcony, or over the balcony. I'm over the. Yeah, you have no idea where I am. Uh, I don't know what Brian's doing. Probably looking for the ring. Well, I well I when you last saw me, I lit the billiard table on fire. That's all. Yeah. All right. right. I'm telling the prince <laughs> everything <laughs> that I've heard in the last nice. five minutes, including that I pushed Julius over the edge, <laughs> <laughs> and that he's a serial murderer. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm gonna come clean. And apologize for. Um, I'm just going to start babbling. An apology to the prince. Who wants to play the prince? I guess. Oh, I'll play Bob the prince again. Okay. Right, uh, <laughs> like, uh, prince. Omg, omg. Cousin, you never cease to be a, a spot of disappointment to me. Just, listen, I got a couple of big things to tell you. I just pushed Julius off the balcony. Oh wait, that's not the biggest thing. That statue, and I'm pointing to the statue, is a bomb. Stop for a minute. Which one is Julius? <laughs> the shot putter? The shot putter. Oh, the Olympian loser. Right. I'm going to slap you. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't you talk about him that way. At any rate, we sent something... Well, this, this, right, gro- right. this grotesque thing... All right, he tried to murder Shar, but I pushed him off the balcony, but they were plotting to blow up the statue. Well, if your cousin were to be murdered, it would be a bright spot in the family for once. 
<laughs> I'm sorry, it just must be the alcohol talking. <laughs> How about you go fuck yourself? <laughs> I <laughs> heard <off>. that. <laughs> <sighs> I'm turning off. I'm leaving. Oh. I'm going to go upstairs and tell the prostitute we're leaving. I mean, I find out what Dubon has been taking this evening. He seems to be crazed. Yes, sir. So I'm going to... So I guess it's, it's, it's it, this I think it you know even though we're forced for good this is a good ending him because he doesn't yeah. believe him yeah, yeah. absolutely it, it, in fact he's not gonna have him put to death afterwards and it's given Duma Duban the the initiative to like forget everything and go up to that helicopter mm -hmm. yeah. so he gets all the way up to the helicopter and the Russian prostitute is waiting for him and the guard's gone. And Amir, you know, the scene probably ends with Amir just opening the door and seeing them both in the helicopter with the rotors spinning. All right. right. Yeah. And we don't know if the prince believes the bomb threat. Right. No. Apparently not. But he sent yeah. his minion to go check it out, apparently. Yeah. Nice. And I just followed him. I didn't go to the statue because the prince specifically told him to find out what you were on, you know? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Sounds good. All right. That was Dubon's scene. All right. So... So my scene is fairly short. Uh, it's mostly narrative uh -huh. in nature. Um, it's a flashback. Mm. It's a flashback to uh, Julius at the pawn shop. Oh. Ooh. So uh, he is basically taking his money. He's buying up everything in the place. And you see him walk out with, you know, the ring in question. You know, <laughs> lots of camera attention paid to it. <laughs> the next scene is a cut, you know, like rapid... What do, they, what do they call that? A bang cut or something like that? Like, boom, to him in a different place. A smash mm -hmm. cut. Smash cut, that's what it is. So smash cuts to him in an almost identical spot, but it looks like it's the back room of a different pawn shop. In which case, he's exchanging this stuff for fakes. Ooh. Cheap knockoff fake jewelry. Oh, no! That looks very, very similar <laughs> to, to what it is. Especially the ring. <laughs> <laughs> and then, the, you know, the, the end of it is him, uh, you know, then it's you know, another quick smash cut to him giving the jewelry to Irina and telling her that it's very, very expensive. It's all very, very real, and she'd better take care of it. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Great. Absolutely. Um, right, so you get a white die for that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't think we need to do anything there. Nope. <laughs> all right, and so then I've got the, the last scene here. Mm. Um, and... I am just successfully lit the billiard table on fire. Duban went running off, you know, in a panic. Clearly, he's no good for anything. And then I realize that Shah ran off onto the balcony. I haven't seen her since. So, this is the moment when I realize that all this shit. I, you know, I've never done anything this big before. I've always been talk and never been action. It's because of Shah. Mm. And I love her. So I run out to the balcony. And I don't <laughs> see her. And I start screaming her name. I'm like, Sha! Sha! Eric! I'm down here. Oh, it's, what, what do you know? And I look down, and there she is. And I start, you know, roping up the window washing thing. And I see Julius unconscious. I said, What happened? He pulled me down here. I, uh, apparently, he's not as nice as he appeared. He goes, I say, it doesn't matter. The fire started. It's all going to blow. We've, you've already got the window washing equipment. Let's get out of here. Ooh. Um, yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Come with me. All right. And I jump onto the window washing equipment, and Julius is there, and obviously... I, I go through his pockets, and I find that he doesn't have anything. Mm -hmm. And I go, well, this guy's no good to us anymore. And I throw him off the window washing equipment. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll spin that into a story or something. Like, he tried to kill you, and I <laughs> saved you. It'll be great. <laughs> sure. Great. And we, and we get the hell out of there. Okay. Yep. As the ropes are fraying. As the ropes are fraying. We just barely make it down. Okay. Well, actually, you guys get to resolve. So, so, and that could be any color. It can be good or well. You, it's it, it will be white. You do get a white die. It can just be good or bad. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so I guess you guys tell me if we get to the bottom or not. See, I love the idea of the tragic lovers who you know finally get that one moment and then it frays and we plummet like twenty floors. 
What do you guys think? Do you agree with the... Uh, yeah, I, I like it. He, I think huh? we should get most of the way down. It should be like three stories yes, before... Yes. And it, then we fall... It, it, high, high enough up that the ending is questionable. Nice. Yeah, yes. Yep. So I could be... It, and then everything's going to explode above us, so it's right. like super yes. questionable. Yeah. Maybe you'll get to the third story, and then it goes off. Okay. Oh, yeah, and, right. and, and, and that blows out the, uh, the ropes and That's it causes right. to fall. Perfect. Yeah. Yep, yep, because I had the timing off anyway. Right. <laughs> right. right. great. In fact, I like the idea of, you know, like, you know, we cut back to watching the fire, like, um, you, you know, go through the whole apartment and then the whole thing and then yep. get to the bomb. Mm-hmm. And that's the trigger. Yep. The fire Perfect. actually does spread to the bomb. Cool. Nice. Cool. cool. All right. All right, let's roll some dice. All right, so it's the same process as before. Roll, roll your dice, subtract the higher set or lower set from the higher set. Okay. All right. Grab some D's here. I got a four black. <laughs> oh, where did it go? Here we go. I got a white three. I also have white three. Wow, really? That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, I rolled an eight on the white and a five on the black. Nice. I have um one white. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> That's bad. <laughs> All right, wait. So Brent has one white. Uh, both Bob and I have both of white three. White three. Which Dreadful. Is, which is grim, white three. Mm-hmm. And I've got four black. So it goes highest to lowest, right? It, it can go in any order. I usually like to go, uh, well, it doesn't matter. We can do whatever we want. But none of, the, none of these are very good. <laughs> no. Yeah, I'm done. Trying, so to, this, trying to find my copy. Of the book? It's also on the PDF on the top of the... Yeah, the aftermath is part of that... Um, oh, okay. ...that table. Uh, let's... Let's everyone read off, I guess, theirs. I guess I'll yep. start. I, I know what's going to happen to me, so go ahead. I have a black force, Savage. Savage is in, quote, something is broken or mashed. Maybe you've got a permanent limp and a bad reputation. Plus, you totally fail. So it's bad, but not deadly, it looks like, for me. All right, who wants to go next? Um, well, I've got white three up, which is for both me and Bob. All right, help want to read white three? Yeah, which is grim. Uh, the stress and trauma from your little adventure are going to haunt you forever. Bits of your soul are destroyed, and you are missing a piece or two. In a few years, children are going to cry when you get too close. All your plans ended in complete ruin. And I got dreadful. You are certainly dead, probably from a self-inflicted wound. <laughs> um, people you care about are also probably dead, maybe through your own stupid, l- ugly failure. Um, to say that you fucked up is an insult to fuck upness. You have to define <laughs> the term. Um, so I'm thinking, you know, when it crashes down, um, there is a. Um, a, 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 a large, like, splinter of wood just right through my chest. Okay. Um, and I, I'm oh. still alive and conscious, yeah. so I get, you know, to, to say, I don't know what happened. Yeah. Um, but, like, I look Slow at you down. and say, you know, we, we get our final moment. Well, so next, the uh, last page is we do a montage. Mm-hmm. Right? Yep. Each Where of your you dice do, represents your a dice. scene in your, in your montage. Yeah, mm-hmm. slash sentence, which, which goes, like, this is, and name your character doing something. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, who has the most dice? Um, I've got Eric. five. You have five, yeah. So, Brian, yeah, you go first. Okay. And we'll just go around. All in right. the same order we can go again. All right. So, um, I'm going down the the scaffolding, and the ropes snap, and we go hurtling down while wreckage uh, is just, like, hitting us in the face, like little bits of shrapnel just cutting into us. Okay. Um, I'm with you, and I'm, like, holding on to you, and you see, like, the light in my eyes as I realize that you came back for me, and I, you know, um, uh, you, you actually cared. You're, like, the only person who ever really cared for me. 
And just as we see that, you know, we hit the ground and you see my eyes sort of bug out. Okay. Oh, it's me. Dubon. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, this is Dubon convincing the prostitute to fire up the goddamn helicopter. <laughs> <in> the <body. laughs> yep. But she is pretty drunk. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. This is Julius plummeting after he has rolled off the side. Now he hits several items on the way down, many awnings and whatnot, until he lands in a uh, a pile of some sort of debris that is enough to fracture his pelvis, shatter several of his lower vertebrae, but not kill him. Mm. Okay. Uh, this is Eric um, looking at his lost love gasping for her last breath and trying to pull her off of the the wooden stake mm. uh, and realizing that he's just hurting her more. <laughs> this is Char um, looking at him as he's doing this total um, acceptance and, and gratitude for what he's trying as she feels the blood you know, pour out of her body, and she says, she whispers, you were the only one who ever really cared about me. Okay. This is Duban and Irina uh, crashing the helicopter <laughs> <laughs> on the roof of a nearby hospital. <laughs> All right. Which this has a helipad. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> All right, so this is Julius uh, fading out of consciousness as two things simultaneously happen. One, he sees Eric stand up from his own crash as he walks away from this mess. Nice. And then blacking out from pain as the shot put completes its fall, <laughs> crushing his throwing hand. Oh. Beautiful. Um, this is Eric taking his last stolen bottle of champagne out of his jacket, placing it in Shah's hands, turning and walking away uh, while things are still coming down on top of them. Mm. And uh, he uh, starts to break down mentally and it just starts angrily screaming shame as his name. <laughs> this is Char dying, saying to herself, well, at least they'll all remember. Oh. That was her third die. That's mm -hmm. the last one. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, this is Dubon watching TV from his hospital bed. <laughs> And finding out that the prince has been killed from a terrible explosion. Ooh. Nice. This is Julius coming to in a hospital bed just down the hall. Okay. As the doctors tell him he will never walk again. Mm -hmm. He will never have any function in his right hand again. Okay. Uh, this is Eric. Weeks later busting in to a secret IRA meeting as they were planning to commit some atrocities during the Olympics and just killing everyone. <laughs> nice. All right. This is Dubon getting blamed by his family for the death of the prince and being <laughs> shot forever. Nice. And this is Julius, 30 years later sitting in a wheelchair, hunched over in front of a small 10-inch flat-screen LCD TV, the cheapest ones that they make 30 years from now. It's got bad reception. He sits there wincing in pain as he watches the shot putters shatter every record that's ever been done, and he sees the gold medal going over the head of the descendant, or the, the grandson of the guy who beat him in the Olympics all those years ago. This is 
This is the final scene, right? Yeah, this is you. Yeah. Yeah. This is Eric. A beaten old man. In a nursing home. He's disfigured. He's got scars all over his face. He's sitting down at a piano that he's claimed as his own. No one else touches it because they know he likes it and everyone scared shitless of him. Even in, in his 80s. He's playing the piano. A shadowy figure comes up behind him. Don't really see who it is. You just see him place a diamond ring on one of the keys and then slam the wooden cover down on the old <laughs> fingers. <laughs> That's it. Very nice. Wow. The, well done, guys. The All opposite right. of, of what nice is. <laughs> <laughs> Which is exactly what you're going for in this. Yeah. That, that looks fantastic. Of, that was a bit of, of a fiasco. Yeah. I'd say yeah. so. I love the way this game more or less writes itself. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love the fact that uh, just hearing the description of the penthouse, this is not exactly how I would have thought it would have played out. You know, through the establishment of relationships and needs, it, it turned from like this like coked out crazy love affair party to. Uh, to just like idiotic <laughs> murder, murder <laughs> you know, oh yeah, like like murder triangle, you know. Ugh. I think one of the keys to like a really successful game of this is that, you know, all the characters need to be one of the following: they either need to be overly ambitious idiots, or someone who gets victimized by an overly ambitious idiot. It doesn't work if you know all the characters are competent and collected and it, it's, it's got, <laughs> they've got to have you've got to have that wild card element that screws everything else so like yeah. the, the Julius Carr I was going at you know he I mean he wasn't in well insane yes but you know wasn't an incompetent jackass right you know, that sort of thing but by being around situations that are like that it's easy to take him and, and, and bring him down with yeah. that sort of uh, poor planning and, and, and all of that yeah, I mean Dubon was re was really Julius's foil there, which uh, yeah. So <laughs> I mean, that, that was Julius's murder. big mistake was Dubon. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, and I love the way that that turned in the in the in the middle when somebody uh, we set up the scene with uh you know for for Julius to see Char and Eric together, <laughs> and then have him turn his attention to Char. That was so perfect because it, mm -hmm. it put her right in between Julius and Dubon. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> and and that 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 set his whole path down there, you know, and that that was great. Brilliant. Yeah, it was fun. Thank you guys. I'm gonna go jump off and uh, watch some okay. TV with wife. Sounds good. Right. Yeah. Take care, guys. Have See a good night. Good game.